started this year talking about Snyder, we end the year talking about Snyder. It's time to talk about the unmade Batman vs. Superman vs. Snyder. This has been the man who knows too much about Batman, and as usual, I am joined by Andruvius Excellentus. Andruvius Excellentus the third. Welcome all to our yearly finale. I guess we can't mm -hmm. say season finale. But True. yeah. Yeah. Yearly finale, everybody. We made it. And we got my favorite goose egg. Zachary Jackson Brown. <laughs> I am S tier. I'm not a goose egg. <laughs> goose tier goose egg plus. Yes. yes, just uh just Zachary Jackson Brown this time. Don't wanna be don't wanna rock the boat too much and do something silly. I'm gonna keep it nice and normal this time. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Well, oh, no, I, I'm ready for Joker's fireside <laughs> chat later. That'll be fun. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yes, and since it's the end of year finale, I actually included more comments this time of oh, the, uh, than oh, usual. Shit. Since, you know, it's the end of the year, it's the holidays, might as well shout out to a few more fans on that. So that's uh, that's what's in store for our very special end of year episode, which, as I said at IT's last time, was is on the original BVS. Oh, versus man. Night. Yes. There are other YouTube videos on this topic. It has been a script that's been leaked out since, I want to say, even before Batman Begins was even out. So it's been on the internet for a while. But unlike other episodes of the podcast, other YouTube videos, we're going to go even deeper and compare this unmade project with the Batman vs. Superman movie we actually got and score which one we think is better. So we had Snyder vs. Critics, Snyder vs. Whedon, and now it's Snyder vs. an unmade movie. So Ooh. I guess we'll have to check this out. So this has been a popular fan request. And so we thought it was best to save it for our end of year episode. But I've got all the comments pulled up. And I, te and I said all these last time too. Wyatt McGee said, are you ever going to talk about the 2002 Batman versus Superman script? Ricky St. Quentin basically said the same exact thing. Will you do an episode about the 2002 script? It's here, guys. It's here. So <laughs> I'm ready. How much, yes. How much do you guys know about this project? Starting with Doo Doo Brown. As you've now renamed yourself. <laughs> yes! I'm taking it back. Doo doo, bro. No, I'm That's not what I'm talking be about. normal this time. <laughs> I love that energy. I, I know doo -doo. this much, Ben. I have zero Ooh, okay. knowledge of this unmade Batman versus Superman. Ah, all right. <clears throat> Andruvius. I have the same goose egg level of intelligence <laughs> that involves total this script. Neophytes, then. Okay. All right. Total <clears throat> neophyte. Well, sit back, relax, as I regale you with some <laughs> of the introduction stuff. So, Batman <laughs> versus Superman vs. By the way, Andrew, Batman versus oh, vs. Thank Superman. Fucking Christ! <laughs> Do you want to give the? Should we give the point already to this? <laughs> Jesus, it's already got a point. I hate that V shit. <laughs> The in the comments are just like, fuck these guys. Uh, but yeah, all right. Point already goes to the unmade movie, and we haven't even started talking about it yet. I'm pretty so. pro-Snyder, but I hate the V. <laughs> also, as, we, as we've talked about in the past, it didn't seem like Snyder had complete control over that title anyway. So Batman vs. Superman VS was developed after Batman Unchained, Batman Dark Knight, as one word, the Bruce Wayne TV pilot, and the Darren Aronofsky Batman Year One script. So this is a gap in the great bat hiatus that we've covered way back in 2019, <laughs> but never really crossed over to talk about because I figured, hey, we should probably talk about Superman movies before we tackle an unmade Batman versus Superman movie, as well as talk about the actual Batman versus Superman movie that was made. So now we're finally here two years later. But anyway, Batman vs. <laughs> Superman from We this had to era. suck Snyder's dick for six months. <laughs> it was a long six months, I'm telling you. <laughs> was it? You know, when you do something you love. <laughs> this... Uh, was a movie that was an attempt to revitalize both franchises at once. So let's remember, like, Batman and Robin was the last Batman movie in 1997. They wanted to revitalize that franchise. Superman had not had a movie since Superman IV, The Quest for Peace, even way before Batman and Robin and all the other previous attempts, which we have not covered yet in this podcast, just kept falling flat until finally they're just like, why don't we just do a movie with both of them <laughs> and then branch them off into their own separate solo movies, which... Honestly, isn't that far off from what they ended up actually doing when they introduced yeah. Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Flash in the DCEU years right. later. So 
It's a little prophetic. But the director at the time was not Zack Snyder, uh, of course, because this is, you know, way before he even did like 300 uh, or even Dawn of the Dead, I think. Mm-hmm. Or maybe that was He was doing Zack, music anyway. videos at this point. Yeah. <clears throat> but the director was Wolfgang Peterson, who did The Perfect Storm and Das Boot. Uh, when discussing the characters, Peterson said, quote, Superman represents sort of everything clear and bright and noble. He represents our hopes and ideals. Batman, on the other hand, represents the dark and obsessive and vengeful side. Um, and the first writer on this project was Andrew Kevin Walker, who was the writer of the David Fincher movie Seven, which looks oh, to be influential shit. on the upcoming. Yeah. yeah, he looks to be influential on the upcoming The Batman movie from Matt Reeves. But uh, he's also an interesting choice to pick for that because you would think he would be a shoe in for something like a Batman reboot. But Batman versus Superman is a whole other thing. So mm-hmm. uh, apparently, he was told by the head of Wolfgang Peterson's production company, to, quote, let's write this as if we want this to be a movie that gets considered for an Academy Award. It's not supposed to be some kind of disposable popular culture. We wanted to take the characters seriously. And this actually isn't that far off from how they wanted to approach the Snyder version either, with Chris Terrio mm-hmm. very much trying to put in a lot of deep theme stuff that is, like, relevant to today, uh, the nature of power, all that type of stuff. So, like, these, this, these projects kind of have a lot in common. Uh, Andrew Kevin Walker also said, quote, it was a combination of material kind of stolen, rightfully and legally, from wonderful ideas from the comics and melding those into an original storyline. I think a lot of the inspiration, if not specifics, lie in Frank Miller's work, specifically in those issues of The Dark Knight Returns, which is pretty obvious, I'd say. <clears throat> so, according to the book Superman vs. Hollywood, the studio apparently read this script by Andrew Kevin Walker, and they thought it was too dark. And my reaction to that is like, really? You thought the guy who wrote Seven wrote a script that was too dark? Uh, it's shocking. <laughs> <clears throat> so who do they get for his replacement? They decide, well, you know, it would be a good idea because Batman versus, you know, Batman and Robin put us in a position where we have to reboot the franchise. Why don't we bring in the screenwriter of that movie that made us reboot everything? So they bring in Akiva Goldsman Ooh, from Batman yeah. and Robin. That's what Akiva Seems looks like. Good like. Choice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've seen his name so many times. I never, never yeah. bothered to Google him. It's you a, hadn't it's watched the special him. features on like, <laughs> DVDs for the Schumacher films. It's like him and a- Ari Arad. Like their names are on all the superhero shit. You mean Avi? Avi, Avi. Arad. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know what he looks like too. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, so similar. <laughs> again, I'm not really sure why they're just like this guy is the best possible person to put in this when he's the one who wrote the script beforehand, but. This is what we've got, and here we are. So it's Goldsman's draft. It's his rewrite that leaked online that we're discussing today. The Andrew Kevin Walker draft, it, in its full form, has not leaked, but I do have some information Oh, on cool. that, too. Um, the front cover page also does not say Batman versus Superman. It just has the title Asylum, and that's not because they were actually going to call the movie Asylum. It was, it was a code name for it. Because they're just like, you know, we don't want the script to leak, especially when it just flat out says Batman versus Superman on it. So they called it like, Asylum. What was it? Yeah. Rory's Kiss or Rory's, Rory's First, first kiss, kiss for the Dark Knight? Yeah. I think so uh, like Friday that. 13th was like Crystal Japan or something like that. They named mm. it. They named um, <laughs> a couple Zach's of them after category. like David Bowie's uh, mm-hmm. songs or something like that. Uh, yeah, I always cool. remember that. Yeah, they're like weird code names for those films. Mm hmm. Yeah, so they really wanted to keep this secret. Apparently, the copies of the screenplay were printed on red paper to make it harder to photocopy. Hmm. Apparently not good enough because it still leaked out, so I don't know what happened if that was like the one copy that was not printed on red paper, but that's what ended up happening. And according to an article that interviewed Andrew Kevin Walker, uh, there was, quote, an elaborate plan to initially market the project as simply called Batman and Superman, keeping the true nature of the film hidden. Posters Ooh. everywhere would read Batman and Superman, but then a week before release, they would be replaced with posters that were identical, except with the middle word ripped out and replaced. So they read Batman versus Superman. Ooh. That's cool. That is kind of cool. Yeah. I feel like I remember, you can pull that off in 2002. <clears throat> not so much now. In the ramp up to Snyder's BVS, <clears throat> there were like a bunch of rumors that the campaign, the marketing campaign was going to look like a boxing match. Remember hearing that? Like like the hmm. like maybe even vintage vintage boxing posters or something. Yeah. You know, this guy versus this guy. But I that, have. I, yeah. Did that ever come to fruition? I I think that was like canned. I have those two posters that are like basically 
Uh, oh, they look mean, yeah. a little screen printy, like up close. They have like a mm-hmm. texture to them that's almost like newsprint. But uh, it's like one of them is Batman's face with the front, the middle ripped off, and it's like yeah, it's Superman. the Superman symbol. The other one's Superman's face. Oh with yeah, Batman is symbol. that like? That's it's the a little only bit thing like, I can think of. Yeah, it's a little bit like it. a boxing promo. Yeah, uh, maybe that's what they were talking <clears throat> about. Yeah, I thought that was canceled. Anyway. Yep, so that's that's the idea. And they even got to the casting stages. So, <clears throat> the screenwriter Kiva Goldsman confirmed that the casting of the two leads were the future Penguin, Colin Farrell, as Batman, and wow. Jude Law as Superman. Which oh my God. kind of seems odd. However, an Weird. article from The Guardian <laughs> back in 2002 said that Jude Law turned it down over script approval on any subsequent sequels. So then it was just Colin Farrell as Batman, and they had to find a new Superman. Wolfgang Peterson would later say that he met with two other actors to potentially replace him as Superman, and that was Josh Hartnett, and the other was Christian Bale. Oh, shit. <laughs> so we could have gotten Christian Bale as Superman. In Superman. Weird. <laughs> Weird. So, uh, Hartnett yeah, a lot was of people... so big in the like yeah, late was... 90s, early mm-hmm. 2000s, man. Yeah. I remember girls were insane over that guy, yeah. and then he just like... Stupid there's... haircut. <laughs> and it just wasn't did, around yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, a lot of people say that Bale was up for Batman, but uh, the specific article I found had Peterson say that it was Hartnett and Bale for Superman. So take that for what you will, but I would trust Wolfgang Peterson over IMDb trivia. So yeah. uh, <clears throat> so it could have been Colin Farrell versus Bale, Colin Farrell versus Hartnett. But the thing is, before I go into the script, we have to acknowledge that this is still a miscast. Uh, regardless of whether you think they're fit for the role, it's a miscast in terms of age because neither Batman nor Superman are actually as young as the actors they wanted to bring in. Mm-hmm. I get the idea they wanted to cast younger actors so that they can do a franchise, but Superman doesn't seem like he's rookie Superman. He might be, you could kind of get away with it, but he, like, he already has fought Lex Luthor. He, he's fought Toy Man. He's married Lois Lane. This is kind of a more experienced Superman in this script. And Batman is definitely older than Colin Farrell was at the time because... He's had Robin and Batgirl fight alongside him, and he's retired mm-hmm. for five years before the beginning of this movie. Which pretty much makes me envision a very different actor from Colin Farrell, one who did yeah. fight with Robin and Batgirl <laughs> beside him. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, fans might kill me for this, but I pictured George Clooney coming <laughs> back for this. Because he just fits this version of the character as a redemption round. The character's meant to be older in this. His Batman is too verbose to be Keaton. Um... His Batcave does have an AI version of Alfred like we saw in Batman and Robin in the script. And <clears throat> it does say in the script that the Joker he fought years ago had the real name of Jack Napier. And remember at the time, the Burton and Schumacher films were part of the same continuity. Let's also not forget that Clooney is the first live-action Batman to acknowledge Superman by name with the line, quote, this is why Superman works alone. So I'm like, eh. It seems like this is the tie-in, and that partially might be because of the fact that we got Akiva Goldsman back, who worked mm-hmm. on the Schumacher films. So there's that. And as for Superman, I was like, you probably need somebody who is closer to Clooney's age in this. So a lot of people really like Brendan Fra- Fraser for Superman. So I'm just like, all right. Yeah. I picture this to be closer to that. what's in the script compared to much younger actors, like a young... Colin Farrell in like his mid twenties trying to play a Batman who's been retired for five years is just like so you were Batman when you were in high school, is kind of my reaction <laughs> when I go through that casting. It just does not work. But if it's a more experienced duo, then it works better. So to me, this is what I pictured. I honestly considered maybe saying like fuck it, it's Michael Keaton and Nicolas Cage, but it just Keaton's Batman just does not really fit with the scripts. Once I read it, what a uh, uh, what time frame has this been like? 2002 set to be released in 2004 okay all right i'm trying to imagine because brendan fraser like really big in the mummy and i think that was like late 90s and then it was yeah so this is like in between him being big in the mummy and sort of being more phased out so that this would have been like right around that time okay so let's go into the script and start comparing the snyder version uh, we've already got one point towards the unmade version due to the title. I think we've agreed on that. So <laughs> yes. let's uh, go with the opening. <clears throat> so unlike the opening of the Snyder BVS, we do not start with the deaths of Thomas and Martha Wayne. We start right in the middle of a terrorist attack. Uh, men in ski masks attack a monument. And Clark Kent's at the Daily Planet when this happens. And he hears the explosion with a super hearing. And of course, he changes. I don't think there's the shirt rip, but he changes into Superman. Um 
Superman arrives to stop the attack, and you've got some classic Superman shit just right off the bat on, like, page two or three. He's stopping debris from falling on people. He's using heat vision to take out glass so it doesn't hurt people below. And after he saves everyone, though, a crowd forms around the, the remaining terrorist, and they start beating on him. One guy has, like, a lead pipe and starts beating up the terrorist, and Superman arrives, and he uses the heat vision on the pipe to stop them, to stop them from killing the terrorist, and he discourages them from killing in terms of basically saying, like, what would make you different from him? So right off the bat, this establishes Superman's philosophy. Superman does not kill and does not want other people to kill on his watch. And so he takes the terrorist away from the crowd to face justice. And as he's flying and holding on to the terrorist, the terrorist turns around and he sprays Superman with kryptonite. And Superman has to drop Ooh. the terrorist and they both fall into the ocean below. And when Superman recovers in the ocean, all he finds is a mask of the terrorist's face. It was somebody else in disguise. And inside the mask, it just says well, the message, this is the beginning. It's hello. <laughs> so, <laughs> ripped his face right off. <laughs> so, it's It's like a Mission Impossible kind of fake It's fake a Mission face. Impossible thing. Yeah, that type of thing. Where okay. it's just like, yeah, I guess in this world, the face, the mask is such that you could fool people into thinking it's your real face. So, yeah. anyway, let's compare the Superman introduction here with the one in the Snyder one. Because both projects have Superman introduced dealing of terrorists in ways that other people don't really like or appreciate. So I thought that was an interesting tie into both. Um, what do you guys think? We had we had this one that I just laid out, and then the one in the Snyder version where it's the whole Africa sequence and Lois Lane gets caught and Superman arrives and sends the guy through the wall. Doo-doo. <laughs> <laughs> if you will, I, I already like the other one better. <laughs> Especially because it's like something that's going on in Metropolis, so you get some yeah. like classic Superman action right off the bat. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Um, my cats are pissing me off. <laughs> All three of them are in here and they're growling <laughs> on the couch. But yes, I like that it's classic Superman action right off the bat, and I like the whole Mission Impossible thing of him getting like sprayed in the face with kryptonite gas and mm -hmm. yeah there's there's nothing problematic with what superman has done he's even <laughs> gone out of his way to uh stop uh you know the metropolis people from killing mm -hmm. someone so he's he's already like shown his morality whereas yeah. in the other one superman definitely kills that guy by pushing him to the wall <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just, yeah very true the this one is better than the Snyder one. <laughs> yep. Uh it's just simpler. It's easier to follow. Uh well all the shit happening and I well, I guess a lot of it was like depending on what cut you saw as well, but mm -hmm. even in the better cut, it was just kinda overthought. Mm -hmm. This is just like just seems a lot easier. It's just very simple. Very simple, easy to follow, class kind of classic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the first two pages, that's great. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just looked it up, too. There is a shirt rip. It's a little subtle, but, like, he's he does do a shirt rip right before he goes in. So that's another, like, classic mm -hmm. uh, box that we can tick. So, yeah, that's uh, 2002 BVS 2 Snyder 0. Sorry, Snyder, but maybe you'll earn points and other stuff. So <laughs> back to the script. Uh, we then cut to a wedding, and here's a twist. It's the wedding of Bruce Wayne. Oh, oh man. man. So the woman he's marrying is not anyone from the previous movies. It's not Julie Madison, Chase Meridian, Selena Kyle, or Vicky Vale, but a woman named Elizabeth Miller. Yes, the, the great comic history of Elizabeth Miller. No, she's a completely original character. <laughs> okay. <this. clears throat> um, for a specific reason, which we'll find out later. But anyway, uh, the best man at this wedding is Clark Kent. So right off the bat, in this version, Bruce and Clark are already best friends. And okay. this is about, it's Batman versus Superman in terms of, like, the disintegration of that friendship uh, on that. So uh, <clears throat> I thought I would bring that up as well as bring up that uh, this is very different from the introduction of Bruce Wayne in the Snyder version where he rushes into Metropolis. And I feel like it's almost unfair thing, but if we're going to compare Superman introductions, we should probably, you know, compare Bruce Wayne introductions on this one. And I'll just start first, and I think I might speak for everyone, but I think this is where Snyder wins, because I'm just like, I think it's just weird to see, like, Bruce Wayne's getting married, and his to best friend's Clark Kent. someone we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone we don't... Right. You're, you're just like, what the hell, as opposed to just, like, the 
one of the best parts of the movie is Affleck's introduction of him. You know, he's jumping out of the helicopter before it lands, even though he was just told behind the scenes not to do that due to, you know, insurance and safety reasons. Mm-hmm. But Affleck knew, like, Bruce Wayne would want to do that. Like, all those types of things. Him running into the, you know, running into danger, him rescuing people. Like, Making that is... car commercial. <clears throat> Making the car commercial, yeah, with the, <laughs> with the car he, he's driving. But yeah, it, it's yep. it's almost like the opposite scenario of the Superman one, where I'm just like, the Superman sequence in the script says so much more about Superman than the introduction in the Snyder one. Though, to be fair, Snyder did yeah. have a whole other Superman movie right beforehand. Uh, but this right. one is just like, now it's Bruce Wayne in the Snyder one that has a lot more, of a better introduction, versus this one where it's just like, here's your new Colin Farrell Batman. He's getting married. And you're just like, what? is just going to be confusing. So I would give the point to the unmade version. I mean, not the unmade version, the Snyder version, the first point to the Snyder version. Yeah, it does seem like you actually get to uh, see him do something more action-oriented in the Snyder film. I guess you mm-hmm. have to take it as well. Like like you just said, there wasn't a lot of setup for Superman in mm-hmm. Batman versus Superman because we've already had Man of Steel. So I mm-hmm. guess if you think about it, this unmade Batman versus Superman movie, you're coming off of like a decade of Batman movies. Yeah. So I can understand why (laughs) they, you know, didn't feel the need to set him up so much. So, but yes, I will say Snyder has a stronger point here. Yes. So, I mean, I see your point, but I feel like Uh this wouldn't be hard to judge (laughs) because it depends on where it would go from there. But mm. I, I mean, yeah, it's not like a lot of action or whatever. But yeah, uh, I mean, I'm gonna be voted voted out anyway. But it's just like, <laughs> interesting. I mean, to me, the main Ooh. thing that's not good is in in the other one, the non Snyder one is, it's just like a totally new character. Like, make it bring back Vicky Vale or something. You know, or Julie Madison, if we're tying it into the Batman Robin one. It's just like, yeah. oh, like she was the chick from the the other one is what, you know, the fanboys would say. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know. Other than that, <clears throat> I don't I mean, I don't hate it. I don't know. I'm going to I'm I'm having a, an an abstention on this one. <laughs> okay. Just no, right, I might see a doctor about that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't matter anyway cuz it's going to go yeah. to Snyder. Yeah, <clears throat> but it is one of those cases where like you do have to introduce them based off of what fits that character in this version of the character has yeah. been retired from being Batman yeah. and this wedding is a very important plot point in here so you kind of have to do it so I, I I get what you mean in terms of like it's it's maybe not as simple as we made it to be um, in the script at the wedding we meet someone described as a raven haired beauty named Barbara Gordon who is now a police commissioner <laughs> yes in raven this, yes in black this version hair. Barbara Ooh. Gordon has black hair and has replaced her father as the new commissioner of police because he died years ago. So Commissioner Gordon's dead. Barbara Gordon is now the new commissioner. And it's also implied that Barbara and Bruce had a thing because I guess Bruce Tim was also in the room when this was being pitched and <laughs> <laughs> this would be cool to, to put in. What if, hear me out, <laughs> Batman fucks the shit out of Batgirl. Right. What? <laughs> Come it's on. Also, Note that this is another thing that's sort of indicative of how it's a loose continuity for the Batman stuff here. So it's like it's kind of sometimes Burton Schumacher and sometimes not. So here, like, Barbara Gordon wasn't in the movies. It was Barbara Wilson in Batman and Robin. There was no Barbara mm-hmm. Gordon. So <clears throat> it's it's a loose continuity here. Along those lines, we also meet another character. I'm sure you guys weren't expecting to show up in here. Aunt Harriet. From oh the 60s my god <laughs> finally jesus <laughs> aunt harriet had a cameo apparently goldsman keeps thinking that aunt harriet is bruce's aunt uh but in the 60s <laughs> show she was dick grayson's but anyway she's an alcoholic old woman at the bar of the wedding at one point so i thought that was kind of funny <laughs> so they got aunt harriet in here but then some random bitch that bruce is marrying <laughs> yeah, they got yeah. one this this part right but mm-hmm. okay never mind all right so Barbara does get along with <laughs> Bruce's bride, Elizabeth, and Bruce jokes that he saw this in a dream once, but they were wearing very different outfits. I'm just like, really? This is how we're going to introduce it? But okay. Um, <clears throat> Bruce goes to Clark Kent, his best man, and Clark, uh, you know, he asks how Lois is doing because Lois is not there. And Clark reveals we're getting a divorce. What? So Lois Lane is not in this script. <laughs> This oh, is specific no. to the Akiva Golson rewrite, according to The Hollywood Reporter. Do you see why I'm just like, this is a weird way 
to launch franchises because you've already got so far, and I haven't even revealed more, that uh, on the Batman side, Commissioner Gordon's dead and Batman's been retired. And on Superman's side, he's divorcing Lois Lane, who we don't meet. So this is weird. In, in this is universe, this the... the last <clears throat> Superman movie was The Quest for Peace, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let, let, I would say that I don't think that this is meant to tie into the Christopher Reeve movies in the same way that this seems to tie into the 90s Batman movies. It seems like a completely new thing because um, of stuff I'll go into later that just does not Yeah, match. I was just trying to think of like <laughs> the audience's uh, previous knowledge of the character or like yeah. exposure to the character. So it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. But I mean, Lois Lane is so famous that like it's like, okay, true. in this version, they're not together anymore. It sucks. Maybe we'll see her later on when... You know, Clark has to pay a lot of money to her, but I don't know. Um, but is this George Miller's script as well? <laughs> is this what is this what we're going over? Is it George Miller that that one that George Miller was going to shoot? It was the Justice League one. Oh, it's Justice League. I don't think yeah, never there mind. Was a, uh... I forget they're well, different. <laughs> you're getting confused. That, that was that was another one though, where you like you like they cast Army Hammer, who was like 22 at the time. To yeah, play, yeah. Like an experienced Batman who's alongside the Justice League. It's sort of, it's just weird. I'm just like, why wouldn't he right. be the origin movie and the older guy in the in the Justice League? But, yeah, yeah. Anyway. So this script doesn't work out, and then they get George Miller's going, and that one gets canned late in the game. <laughs> right. The, these crossover yeah. movies just don't end up working until Snyder comes in. So, okay. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, Bruce brings up that in this continuity, well. Because Mr. Gordon was killed, and so was Robin. So Robin's dead too. Uh, and oh, it's specifically, man. just like in, just like in the Snyder version, it's specifically the Dick Grayson one. Uh, so Bruce has this whole speech to Clark about how like he retired because after Dick was murdered, he just wanted to be more and more vengeful, and he had the taste for blood, and he wanted to kill people, and so he thought that if he didn't retire as Batman, he would turn into a murderer. So this is very similar, and I think we can score it in terms mm-hmm. of the way that. They handle Robin's death and how Batman is a lot more vengeful and bloodthirsty <clears throat> in both versions. Now, obviously, I haven't gone into what this script makes of it, but I think right off the bat, this version establishes like, hey, this is how Robin's death affected him and his psychology, and this is what this character is capable of. Uh, and then I think we've talked about in the past with Snyder's version of what he would try to explore with Batman breaking his code. It was kind of just like it got hazy because it's like, this is your first time introducing Batman. We didn't really get introduced to the code. So the fact that he was breaking it wasn't really that dramatic. It just seemed like, Oh, like let's just make him kill people. Cause that's cool. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. <laughs> for me, I would kind of have to give the point again to the unmade version. What do you guys think? I think just for that specific uh, reason, yes, I would give it a point because mm-hmm. it uh, actually explains it or, explains this exploration into why his behavior has changed and Mm -hmm. if we really are supposed to have some loose connection to like the schumacher version of batman that we know it's like oh yeah that's uh we know who robin is we know he's worked with him so it's uh yeah we understand that this is a change for his uh, for batman's mo Mm -hmm. yeah it's not super explained in the snyder version so Mm -hmm. i mean yeah, I guess the the unmade one. Sure. Because yeah, it's kind of literally like, well, we had a shot of him looking at the dead Robin suit, so you should have figured it out. I'm just Yeah, like, you yeah. should just <laughs> know now <laughs> what we're going for. <laughs> Visual medium. You read a death in the family, right? There you <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just fucking figure it out. <laughs> right, so that's the unmade BVS three Snyder one so far. Oh man. I think <clears> we make up for if Snyder loses this episode, I think He's still, you know, he'll be fine. Still number one <laughs> you know? in our hearts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's sweating too hard. Yeah. I don't. No. Think so. <laughs> I don't think he cares. No. Um, <laughs> Bruce has kept track of what's happened, and he knows what happened with Superman and the terrorist, and so he tells Clark to be careful, because clearly somebody's out to get him with the whole kryptonite thing. It was all a setup for Superman. Uh, <clears throat> so he's like, "Be careful, Clark." Meanwhile, I'm going off on my honeymoon. So he goes off on his honeymoon with this woman we've never <laughs> oh, met before. Oh my god. <clears throat> so, in contrast to Bruce getting married, Clark goes back home to an empty apartment and finds that Lois had her sister move all her stuff out, and he finds the wedding ring that she left behind. So, depressing. That's uh, <clears throat> that's pretty depressing on here. So, poor Clark. 
But uh, meanwhile, Bruce is on his honeymoon with Elizabeth, and <laughs> she doesn't know he was Batman, by the way. Uh, hmm. She wonders, you know, you never really told me how your ward, Dick Grayson, died, and Bruce doesn't really want to tell her. He's not ready yet, but he knows at some point he will. So <clears throat> he gets ready for that night. He's shaving, and as he's starting to talk to Elizabeth, she suddenly just starts laughing. And then Bruce goes to her, and he finds that her, quote, her face is distorted by horrid rigor, eyes bulging, mouth twisted, and possibly wide into a ghastly, Joker-esque smile of exposed teeth and taut gums. And as she dies, he finds a dart in her back, and a message scrawled on the wall in the letters, this is the beginning of the end. Ooh. And it then says that Bruce, quote, screams skyward, tear tears spilling down his face. That's a little oh. much. I feel like that's a Kiva goal. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah. Darth Vader? <clears throat> yeah. So Superman ar- investigates the crime scene, but Bruce isn't there. Why? Because he's rushing home to Wayne Manor in his Rolls Royce because he wants to go back to the cave. He almost runs down a boy and his parents leaving the movies, which is a little on the nose, I think. Yeah. Uh, but he's rushing he back. He leaves a dead woman <laughs> in that room uh, <laughs> to rush to the bad cave. I want vengeance now. Yeah. <laughs> At so. least call 911 and deal with that, man. Uh, I, I think he does, though. I think he does. And then okay, he, okay, he, okay. He so he's driving through Gotham, which is described as a, quote, German expressionistic city of concrete, steel, and menace, which very much feels like the 1989 Gotham. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he goes back. He arrives at Wayne Manor, and Clark is there. And Clark expresses sympathy, but Bruce doesn't want his sympathy. He wants vengeance. And he wants to kill the man who killed his wife. And he blames Superman for this because the message from the man that Clark saved earlier is the same one that was left when Elizabeth died. Which means that if Superman hadn't saved this terrorist, she'd still be alive. So Batman says, quote, you and your rules. What do you know about human suffering? You're some space freak looking down on us, preaching storybook wisdom. You don't have the right a little harsh there, Bruce. That was really escalated quickly. Well, you know, he just lost this woman that we've just met. So that's true. That's true. I guess. Uh-huh. So we have jump down my throat. Now. Why don't you, Bruce? Jeez. <laughs> You're right. I'm I'm kind of grieving here. <laughs> Maybe I kind of haven't done anything over here. <laughs> just reporting this gala event or this sporting event. <laughs> it's a football game. Yeah. Jeez, so, yeah, this, <laughs> this high school football game. <laughs> so in the Snyder film, it's due to a complex manipulation we've gone into where Lex preys on Batman's paranoia about Superman's power in order to have them pit against each other. Here, it's because Superman doesn't want Batman to cross the line and take a life, whereas Batman is pissed at Superman for not crossing that line because that would have prevented the death of his, you know, basically the love of his life. Do you guys have a preference? Because I think this is very interesting how they have very different ways to set this up. Do well, do. number one, I will say that <laughs> I was wrong before. I do have a little bit of knowledge about this now that you started talking about the script. So mm. not quite at a zero, but I didn't know this much detail about it. Mm. And I also like the unmade scripts version better so far because there is an actual difference between the characters. So like (laughs) Superman has a clear moral code. Batman is having, you know, doubts about it and Mm -hmm. issues with following his own code. And it's like, there's a clear distinction between them, Mm -hmm. uh, which is obviously going to, you know, cause this conflict. Whereas in the Snyder verse, one of the, one of the, you know, drawbacks we talked about is the fact that like, they're basically like the same character. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it's feel like yeah. they're both dour. They're both, I, I guess, both don't have an issue with killing because he done he knocked the terrorist guy right through the wall over and I think Batman was wherever he was in the movie. Yes, yeah, <laughs> but still, it's like Superman. You know, he's not innocent in that movie either. What's he worried about the bat in Gotham for? It's, it's just an excuse to get away from the football games. I think so. <laughs> he's getting tired of writing about those foosball games. Foosball. Mm-hmm. Lawrence Fishburne is just like college football, Clark. Come on. <laughs> you like you're from Kansas, right? You like that kind of shit? <laughs> Andrew. So I notice a distinct lack of Polaroids in uh this one. <laughs> and pee pee jars. And pee pee jars, so it's already got that going for it. Yeah. 
again, it seems a, just a little simpler. Mm-hmm. You know, I can say this because we sucked the man's dick for six months. <laughs> but, like, some of the Snyder stuff or um, Goyer's stuff, it just seems so kind of overthought. Convoluted. Yeah. yeah, convoluted, overthought. Like, dude, I mean, we do want it to, like, kind of expand the the medium of, you know, superheroes and comic book storytelling in a movie and stuff. Mm-hmm. But still, you, you can't, like, overcomplicate it. So. <laughs> right. I I I like the I like the unmade one more so far as well yeah. here, so. All right. Yep. Uh, I would agree with that. I think the setup is like very clear and also, like you get it pretty much at like the first act mark. You get it pretty early into the movie, as opposed to like, you know, Bruce looks up at the sky and he hates Superman, but then like comes <laughs> to like eighteen months later and oh. Kryptonite is found and then. You know, other stuff happens, and then eventually it's just like it's not until he, uh, you know, the Senate blows up that he's like, "I'm going to do something about it," which is like an hour and a half into the movie. So it's like <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that point is already here, maybe about twenty or thirty pages in. So, uh, so we're setting early. up. Sorry, Ben, but yeah. basically to make to make this idiot proof for me, <laughs> let's just recap. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Uh, seeking vengeance for the murder and soups. The verses starts to initiate at this point yes. because Superman is not about that vengeance life. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So you have that philosophical difference between the two. Okay. That you know, as Zach was talking about, was might not have necessarily been clear in the Snyder version in terms of like how their methods are different. Okay. Even though you know, we this is also somewhat controversial about like the fact that Batman wants to kill somebody, but unlike the Batfleck version. He has not done it yet. Right. Okay. He just wants to do it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, yeah. This, may, this is a lot better, honestly, yeah. so far. <laughs> yeah. So that is Unmade BBS 4, Snyder 1. Bruce is now against Clark. Batman versus Superman is about to happen. And we'll find out more after the break. Lord have mercy, y'all. Do you like hounds? Do you enjoy pooches? Do you find yourself enjoying time spent with that of canines? Talking about dogs, y'all. As you might have heard, Superhero Stuff You Should Know has now teamed up with BarkBox. For every month, you get a box for your special canine. Pooches! Or hounds. That's right. One free extra month if you go to BarkBox.com slash Superhero Stuff Pod. Follow the link and you'll get a free extra month valued at $35 and valid for all multi-length plans. So get the BarkBox for your hound, for your pooch, for your canine. Your doggo will thank you. All right, we're back, and Batman's unknown wife is dead right after we met her. What's going to happen next? <laughs> well, Bruce has vowed vengeance on the man who killed his wife, and we're going to find out how he and Superman are going to fight. So, uh, <laughs> Bruce tells Clark <laughs> to get out of his house as he turns to the entrance of the Batcave. It Does says, he Clark, bobble his head while saying this line? Get out of my house. <laughs> I kind of wish Dan had, like, photoshopped the middle finger up or something. <laughs> get out of my oh, house. I <laughs> <laughs> Dan's making a better movie over there. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's, so he kicks out Clark, and then he turns to the entrance of the Batcave, and it says, quote, a man poised on the threshold of hell, deciding. Next scene is the mm. funeral, where we see how much Bruce has gone through when we see the headstones. Thomas and Martha Wayne, Richard Grayson, Alfred Pennyworth. Yes, Alfred is also dead in this no! continuity. <laughs> and now Elizabeth Miller <laughs> the biggest damn. loss of all <laughs> Elizabeth Miller no <laughs> when, what God. about that guy that died in Batman vs Superman <laughs> Jack oh Jack, Jack no. yeah oh. and the monkey from the penguin shows up dude <laughs> <laughs> it's his grave is there as well <laughs> the biggest loss of all Reginald one, organ grinder, grinder <laughs> monkey <laughs> Reginald Aloysius the <III>. third <laughs> The organ grinder monkey. He didn't even know him that well, but he just felt like he he had to bury him there. <laughs> he once you know, bit the much. penguin's balls. <laughs> For that, he earned a lot of respect. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like the Batfleck version, this version of Batman has also gone through so much loss that he's at a breaking point, is kind of what I think both versions were going for. And again, I'm kind of just wondering... How much was 
read of this original draft because there's a lot of thematic sim- similarities as you guys can already see and mm-hmm. we've only we're only like 20 to 30 minutes in to this there's a lot of other stuff that comes up so uh clark requests time off from the daily planet to emotionally deal with what's been happening and the fact he just got kicked out of wayne manor uh and bruce finally descends into the bat cave which is described as a quote five-story cavern cut out of solid rock which just shows again this is a veteran Batman. Colin Farrell as Batman makes no fucking sense. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the Batcave senses an intruder and is basically counting down to self-destruct unless Bruce gives the code word. And Bruce simply keeps walking in. And it almost seems like he's tempted to just die there mm-hmm. and let the cave blow up with him in it. And at the very last minute, he gives the code to stop it. Where's he's oh, wow. to find vengeance. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and then lo and behold, who shows up to help? But... AI Alfred, yes. This is the return of the Michael Kopf oh, Alfred in my man. mind. It takes like that thing away a little bit, you know, <laughs> of him being dead. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's Jarvis before Jarvis existed uh, mm-hmm. as, a, as an AI version. Oh, man. This is but, terrible. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of just like, if you're just going to have an AI Alfred anyway, <laughs> why did you kill him off? <laughs> like, yeah, it's dumb. It's weird. Um, so Bruce runs the dart that killed Elizabeth through the bat computer and tells Alfred that he's going to go to work. Obviously, his number one suspect is the Joker, but the Joker is dead. So, who is doing this? He gets the Batman costume, quote, armored and jet black, awaiting resurrection, which is a great line. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we see a crime take place that Batman takes down. You know, he comes back and he takes down criminals. He's back out of retirement. Noticeably more brutal, which would be even more shocking if it's Clooney. If we're going by my fan cast. <laughs> that would be really cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting more and more on board with that casting yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even when the criminals surrender, he says, not yet. And still keeps beating them. So <laughs> oh, my God. His target is the leader named Eddie, who used to run with the Joker. And Batman says, whoever is masquerading as the Joker is a dead man. Now... What's funny is that Eddie is also the name of one of the muggers in the opening of Batman 89 who said, you shouldn't have turned that gun on the kid, man. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, in that a deep guy. dive way, I was picturing him getting roughed up again, being like, God damn it. <laughs> so he just does has he's the worst luck. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> meanwhile, Clark in this movie, while Batman is out of retirement, Clark is almost in semi-retirement in this movie uh, in a similar way that it was we saw in the short sequence in BVS, the, the Snyder version, where he like, after the Senate bombing, he leaves and goes up to the mountains. Clark, you know, kind of has his own <clears throat> journey as Clark Kent here, but he doesn't go to the mountains. He goes back to Smallville, and he hears in Smallville about Batman's new reign of terror, and he ends up bumping into Lana Lang at some point. Yes, Lana in this version already knows that Clark is Superman, and together, uh, you know, they she has some hints about it, but she clearly knows, and Lana is, is obviously the main female lead of this movie since... Hmm. Elizabeth Miller is dead, and Lois is divorced. Clark and is not in any scene whatsoever, and so oh Lana God. is the one who's around. Um, they find out that there is a boy uh, who basically went on a dare and got into a river and is trapped in a car inside the river. So uh, Clark goes to the rescue, but not as Superman, but as Clark Kent, which I thought was kind of cool mm-hmm. uh, on it. So while Batman's going to be investigating who murdered his wife, Clark is going to basically have to find himself again in Smallville is sort of what's been set up. Uh, Meanwhile, Batman pays a visit to a certain Superman rogues gallery villain. This would have been the live-action movie debut of The Toy Man. Oh, shit. The Toy Man is in this. He is supposedly recently reformed and has a history of having supplied gadgets to the Joker in the past, which is why Batman's here. He's also lost a hand. So Batman finds that the best way to interrogate him is to take his good hand and put it inside a vice and start tightening the vice on him. (laughs) Okay. And, and Toy Man's like, I don't know anything about it. And Batman's like, then you shouldn't be afraid of this. And he brings the dart that killed his wife up to his throat. <laughs> and the Toy Man's like, okay, okay, I know stuff. And as Toy Man's about to spill, a certain toy helicopter flies in and starts firing at them. As Toy Man admits the truth, quote, he's back. Joker's back. <laughs> so yes, Batman versus Superman has Joker as one of the main villains in this. Well, that's okay. already a plus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not Along peeing in jars either. <laughs> yeah, there's no pee in this. In this it does screen. feel like Goyer <laughs> went in and replaced the wedding with a jar of pee. <laughs> 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 yes, this will do. <laughs> yes. So Batman 
<laughs> this, this, this Joker helicopter toy thing is blowing shit up, and <clears throat> Batman escapes, but Toy Man gets left inside with a toy bomb that ends up exploding and presumably killing him. Which, I'm like, we could have gone without that. Do we really need to kill off Toy Man for this? But I guess it's supposed to show Bruce's brutal state of mind that he kind of technically leaves Toy Man to die. Mm -hmm. that. So It's not nearly as brutal as what the Ben Affleck version does, but still, I think maybe that's what they were trying to do. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> this is for the ladies, but both Clark and Bruce were supposed to have back-to-back -back shirtless scenes in the script. <laughs> so Clark is shirtless as he works in the farm until Lana arrives and he puts a shirt on. So I'm just like, this is kind of <laughs> like very much <laughs> deliberately planted here. You know, this is pre-Chris Hemsworth getting a shirtless scene in every Thor movie type of thing. Yeah. Um, they hang out together while Clark confesses mm -hmm. that the, you know, the Kent farm is the only place where he feels human. And so, you know, Lon is the only person he can kind of open up to in this continuity. Uh, it then says that Bruce is shirtless as he works on the gymnastic rings. And he calls out to the AI version of Alfred that, and says, quote, I need the car. And is the AI meet, quote, version of Alfred also shirtless? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Some shirtless 80-year-old 2003 CG. <laughs> No, the version also, of him they, like, make him buff. is yes, is buff. <laughs> oh, it's a buff Alfred. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like right away, sir. <laughs> so he asks Alfred. He asks Alfred to prep the car, and so we meet quote a car out of myth, new, sharper, jet black lines, glowing helm. Tomorrow's Batmobile. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> back to Smallville. It looks like in this version, Clark and Lana have a backstory with Lex Luthor, where they all grew up in Smallville. So this is another Ooh. reason why I'm just like, this is definitely not in the Christopher Reeve continuity. Um, Lex supposedly at one point suspected Clark Kent of having powers. So to test it, he cut the brake lines of a car and tried to test Clark Kent on that. Clark, of course, found some other way to save the occupant inside. But the car crashed inside of a lake. And it's that exact car in that lake <clears throat> where they had just rescued that boy that I talked about who, you know, he and Lana rescued this boy who was trapped in there. Like, that's, it's that car. And so Clark is like, I feel responsible because that kid almost drowned in a car that was done that, you know, basically that Lex did in order to suss me out. So he's like, how does it work, Lana? When do we stop being responsible? You know, Clark is now just feeling all this guilt about all these different things that he feels like, you know, are his fault. And Lana points out the irony, which I think is a good line, that normal men dream of being Superman, while Superman dreams of being normal. He dreams of not having this type of responsibility, that type of stuff, too. Um, Lana brings up the night that he told her about his powers before he left Smallville, and he showed her by flying with her, which is exactly what happened in the 80s John Byrne Man of Steel comic. Um, right. And Lana confesses that, I didn't think that you were going to tell me about your powers when you came over. I thought you were going to ask me to marry you. And when I'm still out. going through the divorce with that bitch <laughs> Lois, so he's like bitter. <laughs> that raven haired succubi. <laughs> <laughs> raven haired succubus. <laughs> so yeah, no, she she remembers that night where she thought that he was going to ask her to marry him. And in reality, he was confessing his powers and saying that he had to help the world. She realized that uh, he was not going to be able to, to be hers, that he belonged to the world and she would have to sacrifice her love for him. And so she brings up, I didn't fall in love with Superman. I, didn't fall, in, I fell in love with Clark. Mm. Clark recognizes this and they kiss. So clearly Walker and Goldsman are very pro Lana and Clark versus mm. Lana, you know, Lois and Clark in this. Uh, in the meantime, while Clark is hooking up with Lana, uh, <laughs> Batman goes to the cemetery and digs up the grave of, as it says in the script, Jack Napier. But Ooh. Jack Napier's name is scratched out, and it says the Joker in spray paint over it. I like this song. Uh, okay. Yes. And Batman starts digging, and he digs up the coffin, and he opens it, and there's no body, but instead a jack-in-the-box with Joker's face on it. And Batman destroys it and, quote, fist wide, face to God, screams. I'm just like, come on, Goldsman. Why do we have to have him screaming into the camera all the time? No again? Another Darth Vader no? <laughs> yep, twice. Come on, man. Oh, so later in, Gotham, later in Gotham, Batman finds out that somebody's trying to steal the bat signal. <laughs> so, and it's not Bane this time. Uh, so Batman oh, confronts man. them only to find that their lips have been sewn shut. 
and so he fights these silent henchmen. And even at one point, it says that he whips out a club from his utility belt and starts just starts beating them with it. Oh man, uh, a bat club, dude! I don't know if yeah. I like that. <laughs> um, and then a voice—it's a dark night him. stick, Andrew. Oh, okay. <laughs> Copy <Yes>. that. <laughs> uh, a voice taunts him as he fights the henchmen. And Batman wonders who it is. And we hear someone say, you know me because you made me. And then, of course, Batman turns and he sees, quote, the Joker glares down, lean and lethal in a purple zoot suit, green haired, white skinned, grinning his wet blood red grin, literally from ear to ear. Now, technically, this is supposed to tie into Batman 89 and Jack Nicholson is the Jack Napier Joker. However, continuity is really loose here and the way he talks just does not match up with Nicholson. Uh, there's also no mention that this Joker killed Batman's parents. So it's like kind of tied into 89, but kind of not. It also mm. says that this Joker talks in a sing-song type fashion, which is way more Mark Hamill and way less Jack Nicholson, I mm. think. So right. uh, it also says that he does a handstand at one point, and I really struggle to see Jack Nicholson Ooh, do that. Even, no, even in 89 <laughs> compared to 2002. A, a handstand. <clears throat> um, if we flitz with the script a bit, and considering what, you know, we find out how Joker is back. I will say that this is, we should just picture this to be not Jack Nicholson, but maybe a younger spry version of Jack Nicholson. Maybe picture Hugo Blick, who played young Jack Napier in Batman 89, because honestly, Joker is not, he's a big player, but he doesn't have really a lot of scenes. And it just kind of makes sense that this is just a younger version of the Jack Nicholson one who just talks a little differently. But hmm. he's really not into this that much, but he does have a big pres- presence still. So Batman asks how Joker can still be alive, but obviously Joker doesn't answer. And Joker's men start using flamethrowers on Batman before they take off in Joker's truck, which then <laughs> leaves leads into a car chase. Yeah, so we have a car chase in this one. Uh, it is Batman versus Joker <clears throat> instead of Batman versus KG Beast. So uh, Batman tries to lock on the target of the Joker with the... I guess he's got the same targeting system that he had in the Batwing in Batman 89 inside mm-hmm. this Batmobile. So he tries to take him out, but Joker throws these exploding b- bouncy balls that prevent him from firing. <laughs> okay. And so we can continue this chase until the Joker's men pull out a bazooka and take out the Batmobile. Sound familiar? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, All right. Uh, <clears throat> Batman uses the ejector seat and grapples his way onto their car to pursue. And uh, once he's on there, Joker basically stops the car and throws him off, out, uh, throws him off. And... He taunts him, basically saying, too bad your friend in the blue pajamas didn't kill me when he had the chance. So again, like emphasizing the whole thing about like, if Superman had killed me, your wife would still be alive. Just so. wait until in- Injustice Comics, man. It's like 10 <laughs> so, years. So the terrorist at the beginning is the Joker? Is the Joker, yeah. Hmm. Weird, huh? Yes. Uh, so Joker tries to kill Batman, but the silent henchmen actually take him away and prevent him from doing it because it interferes with a plan that they have in mind. So uh, they basically walk away and leave Batman for dead because they have other plans for him, and that's kind of the end of it. But anyway, that was the car chase in this movie. We had a car chase in the Snyder film. We have a car chase in this one against the Joker. Do we have any preferences? I know it's a little difficult considering we don't Hmm. actually literally see it, but this one does have the benefit of having the Joker in it, so it's kind of puts the Snyder one at a disadvantage. This already gives it a point. It's the Joker. (laughs) Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. I was thinking the same thing. Is is it yeah. also a little bit more like that comic book fun? Yeah, like, exactly. What's was he shooting at him again? What's Joker shooting at? Exploding bouncy balls. Bouncy balls. Yeah. yeah, like that's cool. And I would do even like <laughs> dynamite on chattering teeth or some yeah. shit like that. You know, some classic gags. So yeah. Also, Batman uh, doesn't kill anybody in this chase. Oh, good. Yeah. So it's 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 this one. It's the unmade <laughs> Smashing one. Smashing right. cars into each other, and it, it unmade. aggravates me. The Joker does not. There's no explanation for how he's bat. Like he was there free pizza. Be. Okay, there all right, be. I'll be patient. Okay. <clears throat> uh, in the Snyder, yeah, so in the Snyder Films, Car Chase versus this one, we're giving it to the unmade one again. So unmade BVS5, Snyder 1. Sorry, Snyder. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, meanwhile, back at the farm, literally, Clark mm-hmm. goes to the spaceship and has it analyzed the kryptonite that was on the mask that the Joker, who he doesn't know is the Joker yet, uh, <clears throat> sprayed onto him. And as he's waiting for it, he's with Lana, and he muses over... You know, what do I do as the ship analyzes a kryptonite? Quote, what if I don't go in there and read the scan? What if I stopped interfering? Just stayed here in Smallville and lived a normal life. I'm not human. Who am I to dispense justice to humanity? You know, he's thinking about basically ending Superman. 
And it's Lana, who's the one who ultimately talks him back, bringing up that he'll always be Superman. Asking, like, how could you actually sit back and let so many people die? How could you actually do that to the world? You're not going to be able to do that. Because that's just not you. <clears throat> and she says, quote, that's lucky for the world. It's just unlucky for me. I So these kind of scenes, I like. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead, but I yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's fine. if if yeah. I may interject, um, right. the I feel like though these kind of scenes are polarizing because some mm-hmm. people some people cannot stand their heroes to question themselves. That's true. You know, like w- when Bond like kind of goes on his like little uh um side quest in the beginning of that one movie, like two two or three movies ago. I forget the fucking it may, might have been. Was it a Daniel Craig one? Yeah, it was a Daniel Craig one <clears throat> where he, like, is just taking a detour and taking a break from the missions, and it's in the beginning oh, of the Skyfall. movie. Skyfall. Skyfall, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the best one. I know, that's the best. I, I like that one a lot, too. But I've heard some people like, and not just not just that movie, but other movies, too, but this is just an example. Like, they hate, they hate, they hate that part because it's the hero questioning what he does, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you know, like it, it stops the action and all that. But for me, it humanizes them. Like mm-hmm. this is, you're not watching them. I mean, at least me anyway. I'm not watching a movie just as a series of stunts mm-hmm. and badass shit. Yeah, I want to see that. But I want to see. I like seeing this back and forth, this internal struggle kind of shit. I mean, yeah, yeah it can get too emo or whatever at times. But you know, that's a fine balance, I guess. But. Um, at any rate, I, I like what Superman's doing here, but I do feel like if they, if they made this movie with this scene, it would definitely deter <clears throat> some people, especially like, like John Wick fans or something, you know, like yeah. John Wick is just so like yeah. fucking zero to 60. We're kicking ass the whole time, which I understand there's a fan base for that, obviously, but mm-hmm. I kind of, I like, I, anyway, I like these scenes, long story short. Yeah. I, I think it's a case where they're just like, hey, we're giving Batman all the action so that yeah. we can give Superman all the like introspective stuff where he's like, he's not saving a whole bunch of people or fighting aliens right now. He's yeah. he's in a farm talking to his high school sweetheart. Like it's 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 interesting. I'm sure there also would have been some uproar from a certain you know YouTube fan base being just like, <laughs> Superman needs a woman to tell him to be Superman. This is right. bullshit. I think God, God, really God forbid they humanize that. Superman. You know, <laughs> God forbid they do all that. I think there would What'd also you say, be doo-doo? like some some kickback because like there's it's been a while since there's been a scene where Superman's in his costume doing something. I get that so he's like saved. Movie, yeah. Well, he saved uh, some right, people right, right. like as Clark, but it's like you hadn't seen him as Superman since like the very yeah. beginning of the movie. I feel like mm-hmm. I would I would be disappointed in that, kind of like I was in Wonder yeah. Woman, where it's like all right, she's Wonder True. Woman for mm-hmm. like eighty four. So it's like she's it. She's Wonder Woman for like the first five minutes, and then she didn't get back in that costume again for a long time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's got to rape that dude about ten more times. Then, Shame and me. only then. <laughs> and she's earned Moving it. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, I've man. had to explain that to several people because a lot of people just. I mean, I missed it. Our episode. Yeah. I missed it the first time too, honestly. Yeah. But then when I rethought, I was like, "Oh yeah." But anyway, um, yeah, and it's like I've opened so many eyes to that <laughs> to that movie. <sighs> All right, in the Batcave, uh, <laughs> we have a visitor. Barbara Gordon visits Bruce, and Bruce blames the AI Alfred for letting her in because just like his real life <laughs> counterpart, he's just letting girls into the back. I was programmed by the real Alfred before uh, he kicked the bucket. <laughs> it says that we see, quote, older Batman costumes, a sleek female version, so obviously for Batgirl, as well as the Robin suit and the Nightwing suit. So Ooh. Dick was Nightwing before he died. It also is basically said that Two-Face killed Dick's Nightwing, which of course then fucks with the Sch- Schumacher continuity unless... Tommy Lee Jones survived that uh, that fall. He fell just <clears throat> right in between those spikes. <laughs> it's Chris O'Donnell, Nightwing, just fell and broke a hip. So <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> he fell and he could not get up. <laughs> <laughs> that joke's from the nineties. <laughs> so Barbara tells Bruce that the mask doesn't give you the right to kill, and Br- Batman okay. basically tells her, "Stay out of my way." 
typical Batman stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> Shines so. a light on her fucking face in the Batmobile. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like in the Batmobile in 89. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me. Don't talk you. to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what Batman's up to. In the meantime, back at Smallville, it looks like a tornado is heading towards Smallville. Oh and man! This is okay. So I'm going to describe a really cinematic sequence where Lana is at her house and she's you know preparing for the storm, and she looks out, and out in the field is Clark, and shirtless. he's just staring at her, and he's not no, he's not sure. He's just staring <laughs> oh, at her. fucking no, <clears throat> then. And just, uh, you know, just picture kind of like, I was kind of picturing, you know, Henry Cavill in the, you know, Zack Snyder's Justice League when he's in the field and stuff. Shirtless. And and they're, he's no, <laughs> no, he was he shirtless shows, in that one part. But he yeah. shows her one nip, like, <laughs> out the window. Cavill, out. Cavill yeah. just gives like a whoop, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so she sees him and he's standing in the field and the tornado's coming. And it's coming closer and closer, but he's just standing there and he's looking at her. And she kind of nods to him because she knows what he's about to do. And he kind of just lets the storm take him. And the tornado starts shedding his clothes and underneath his clothes. It's not him shirtless. But it's the <laughs> oh. Superman. It's the Superman suit. Uh, okay. And Superman <laughs> takes off. Yep. <clears throat> and he starts saving people during the tornado. He rescues an old couple's truck by holding, you know, holding up in the roof. And in Smallville, as everyone's bracing for this tornado, a boy looks up and he says it's a bird. And a woman says, is that a plane? And another person looks up and says, it's Superman. And all Smallville sees Superman soaring around the tornado. He's circling around it clockwise, battling it counterclockwise to the tornado's, you know, winds. And basically makes a, quote, a tornado within a tornado in the opposite direction in order to sort of disperse it. And he basically fights the storm. Does he make sure that his father dies in it, though? No, he doesn't. Uh, okay. His dad's already goes, dead in this one, so he can't do it He again. digs his father up and throws him into the... It's <laughs> <laughs> just the coffin. Woo, woo, woo. The fucking uh, cow from Twister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, dad said to keep on hiding. <laughs> so I guess I'll just let him die. So uh, it says, quote, a golden shaft of sunlight shines down upon Smallville like a blessed bestowed. A vision of heaven on earth. That's Very poetic, people. but yeah. Basically, That's what I'm talking about. Superman is back. Uh, so now, Hell yeah. we can do another competitions thing. Both Thanks, this Lana. And Snyder's, yeah, Snyder's take have a version of Superman considering quitting and uh, you know having to have his own introspective journey. The Snyder film is a lot more streamlined than this. It was after the bombing of the Senate, and he just kind of he tells Clark, he tells Lois that he's not down for it anymore. Goes to the mountains hallucinates his dead dad and then comes back uh and then in this one it's more of like conversations <laughs> with lana throughout smallville taking up a lot more screen time though but uh, a lot of conversations with lana and then saving people in the tornado so what do you guys think unmade or snyder it's got to be that tornado scene that's way more mm-hmm. interesting than him having an existential crisis on the mountaintop to because that like we said still kind of derails the action of the movie and the pacing of the movie whereas mm-hmm. this one it's like dun, da, 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 it's like you know he's got mm-hmm. his clothes ripped off by the tornado and he's superman again and he's he's spinning around a storm and he's saving these ugly ass people in the comic book and he's, <laughs> he's ready to go it's him sail for that art <laughs> i i was thinking i was like i usually i love well I'm a fan of Tim Sale, but uh, I have this book, and I it's been a while since I've read it, but there's some ugly-looking people. That one thing looks like Gollum. <laughs> They're dour, man. They're sad until they see Superman flying. Yes. I guess so. <clears throat> and they get the spark of hope, dude. Yeah. Uh, it was obviously the unmade one, man. I mean, come on, dude. This is yeah. uh, a lot better. He's fucking f- fighting the weather, which, yeah. I mean, that's also kind of classic, right? Because he, he's yeah, fighting, little, like, earthquakes yeah. and shit. In mm. the first Reeves one, and that's you know it's been handed down f- since the beginning of Superman. So, um, yeah, it kind of harkens mm. back to all that stuff, and yeah, this is again, yeah, it's this is a lot better despite their ugly faces. <laughs> this is just Tim <laughs> Sales comic. It's, you know, I don't think they would have looked like that <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> No, I don't think so. <clears throat> so, unmade BBS gets six. Snyder one. Sorry, Snyder. Um, after It'll saving right. everyone, Superman then decides that he's ready to go back out there and investigate 
this, you know, this kryptonite that was sprayed on him. And so he goes back to the Kryptonian ship and he finds out what it identifies. And all he says is, no. So <laughs> what is he horrified about? Well, we cut to him going to Metropolis prison because he's about to meet a prisoner. Yes, he's about to meet Lex Luthor. Mm-hmm. So yes, this script has both Lex and Joker in it. Oh, uh, shit. <clears throat> Lex has, quote, a completely bald head, of course. It also says he has very long, sharpened nails, which pays off later, I promise. Uh, <clears throat> but they make an exchange that Lex will be allowed unsupervised time with his lawyer if he can give Superman some information, Hannibal Lecter style. Mm-hmm. So Superman brings up that the kryptonite that was sprayed on him in the beginning of the movie by the Joker has the same heat, sig- you know, the same signature as the bomb that Lex once detonated into orbit years ago. Uh, a kryptonite bomb. So Lex is somewhat connected to this kryptonite. So Lex brings up that he's not involved. The kryptonite is what he got from Project Achilles Heel, which was when the U.S. Department of Defense contracted Lex to come up with a bomb as a contingency for the day that Superman would decide to be, quote, truth, justice, and the some other way, as opposed to the American way. Uh, so <laughs> The international Superman doesn't way. <laughs> so Superman doesn't seem to believe it, but Lex insists that it's true. The government is planning to kill you at some point. So um, he says that he's only locked up because he tried to be rid of Superman before the government was ready. He says he despises Superman's, quote, paternalistic meddling and that he's an alien invasion of one here to rob us of our destiny. So classic Lex Luthor stuff. Uh, That's cool. I, I like those lines. Yeah. That type yeah. of stuff. He doesn't. He also does not have a huge role. It's not really about the villains in this. It's about the heroes uh, in this script. But um, uh, I will listen to Zoolander's friend Billy Zane for a potential casting this because he was a big <laughs> yeah. fan cast at the time, and it's it's it felt I like the Arrowverse was the yeah the Arrowverse was like the one chance where you could get him. And even though I love John Cryer, I'm just like this is kind of a no brainer. But anyway, yeah, he was not <laughs> perfect man. Yeah. This whole time, we also find out that Batman is monitoring the conversation from the Batcomputer. He has surveillance inside the Metropolis prison. And so he's been listening to Lex, and now he knows where Kryptonite is. As opposed to putting a tracker on a truck and then chasing down and destroying the truck of his Batmobile, only to not be able to find the, tr- the truck because Superman destroyed your Batmobile. So anyway. Right. Um, <laughs> The Joker sends out toy Zeppelins to drop off flyers to people, as well as has a message challenging the Dark Knight to meet him in Metropolis. This is all, of course, a trap, because he wants the Dark Knight to meet him in Metropolis to try to kill him, because he knows that Superman's going to try to stop him. So this is all setting up the big fight. <clears throat> Batman, of course, seems to be up for the challenge. Now, quick detour on this, because I have one of the few scenes that we know is specifically from a previous draft and not from Akiva Goldsman. The Andrew Kevin Walker script has an additional scene where Batman shares to Alfred about Batman's last case before he retired. And in this draft, it might actually be the real Alfred because it doesn't seem like he's the AI one. And I'll go into more later. Mm -hmm. But in this version, Batman brings up the reason why he retired years ago is because of one villain, not the Joker, because Joker was dead, was dead, but the Scarecrow. So Scarecrow Mm -hmm. has a cameo in the Andrew Kevin Walker Mm -hmm. script. Uh, I feel like he almost is referencing the fact that like Batman Unchained didn't get made, Batman Dark yeah. Knight didn't get made, so let's just have Scarecrow in there for something. So Scarecrow was, and this is where you really see that this is the same writer as uh, Seven, Scarecrow <clears throat> was responsible for the, quote, Jigsaw murders. Not Jigsaw was in the Saw movies, this is much worse than that. Uh, he basically killed people for their individual body parts so that he could put all their parts together and form a body uh, in his own, mm. like, garden of flesh and stuff. A so scarecrow. Batman tried... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, mm. to build a he's scarecrow making, a, he's making his body. own scarecrow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, out of other people's right. body <clears throat> parts. Uh, okay. So Batman tried to find, you know, what makes Crane tick. And he talks about how he watched the forensics work the case for clues and all that type of stuff. And then he starts spying on him in Arkham. And Crane in Arkham always is staring at this flower pot. And he also has a bandage around his finger. And Batman thinks about this. And he realizes what that means. And he takes the flower pot and he destroys it. And inside the flower flower pot is Crane's own severed finger. Crane is creating a garden of flesh uh, or his own scarecrow 
with other people's body parts, but also including himself in there, including his own severed finger in there. And that's when Batman realized, quote, you can't fight madness. It's undying, always reborn. You can't fight madness without giving some part of yourself over to it. Feels dark as fuck. <clears throat> also seems like this wouldn't really be something that would make Batman retire, though, in my opinion. This feels like a regular yeah. Tuesday in Gotham. He's probably just <laughs> as like, far as I'm eh, concerned. Yeah. fucking scarecrow, what a nut. <laughs> what a nut, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well, I can't save these <laughs> crazies, so I'm done. <laughs> uh, this is all from a script excerpt on Andrew Kevin Walker's script. Um, not script, his website. <clears throat> Uh, it's a script excerpt on his website that's about like four pages or so, and it ends with a scene of Alfred appearing to unpack clothes in Wayne Man Manor. So that gives credence to a theory of mine. I think in the previous version of this, Alfred was not dead or in I AI form. I think he was actually alive, but he left Bruce at one point, Dark Knight Rises style, uh, and is now back to the manor during this story, which now makes sense because why would Batman tell him all this if... Alfred was there. Mm. Alfred was clearly not around at the time. He left, and so maybe Alfred's back and is catching up with Bruce, and maybe that's what's happening. So that's my theory on it. <laughs> to make this more confusing, though, Akiva Goldsman said that the Andrew Kevin Walker draft started with Alfred's funeral. So I have no fucking clue what's okay. going on. <clears throat> so unless this was like another flashback before Alfred died, I don't get it. But it's, it will... We'd have to bring on Andrew Kevin Walker or Akiva Goldsman in order to ask them what the hell's going on with this. But anyway, <clears throat> I wish there was more to compare, but that's all I've got on the Andrew Kevin Walker draft in comparison to this one that we're going into. So anyway, going back into this script, Batman now knows where the kryptonite is, so he hunts after Project Achilles' heel, you know, the government-funded kryptonite stuff, mm -hmm. and he uses the Batcopter which is a rare occurrence. We don't That's really get to see that much. Outside interesting. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it also says that Batman presses the bat emblem on his chest and his entire costume does a chameleon-like color change from black to patchwork camouflage brown, green and gray, as he backs into dense foliage, disappearing before our very eyes. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. cool, right? Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's basically as if they had an idea for a potential action figure. Uh, hmm. Just like camouflage <laughs> Batman, you just press his thing and his his suit changes. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of Batman Beyond, where it would just like oh yeah, kind of right. make him invisible whenever he touched his uh, belt buckle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the scene is supposed to be when Batman steals kryptonite from the military. Our visuals are just not loading right now, so that's that's a problem. Take like your word for it. <laughs> 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 but yes, he what steals happened? kryptonite from the military, uh, just like um, he steals the kryptonite from LexCorp in the movie. Uh, when soldiers catch him with kryptonite, Batman launches himself out of there with, it specifically says, a bat jetpack. Oh, He's okay. He's got a bat jetpack in Under this Under uh, or over so his cape? I don't know, actually. She's probably under, I would think, but... Under the burn cape, the, so the the, the burn burns the bottom of the cape. <laughs> yeah. cape. Or he takes off the cape and he takes, and then there's the jetpack. I don't know. It's oh, under the cape, true. and then he takes the cape off, and then he takes off on that. So we'll give people a shot of that here, of the jetpack. Oh, Look here we at go. Him go. Yeah. Uh, Bruce then goes to his dead wife's grave, and that's where Clark visits him in this Photoshop that Dan provided for us of them meeting oh, nice. in front of the uh, the grave. <clears throat> so Clark tells him, "You know, this is a trap." Uh, in terms of Joker telling him to come to Metropolis. And uh, he says, quote, we're supposed to fight. We're supposed to destroy each other. So this is similar to Clark in the movie being like, Bruce, wait, wait, Bruce. All right, let's just fight. <laughs> uh, and in this one, <clears throat> Clark is telling him, like, this is, a, this is a trap. They want us to fight. They want us to do this. Mm -hmm. And Bruce says, I know, but I still want to anyway. Bruce knows that it seems to be Luthor and Joker working together in a trap, and he doesn't care. Uh, because of the resentment that he has towards Superman on saving the Joker beforehand. So he asks, what if it had been Lois? In terms of like, if it had been Lois who was killed and stuff. Right. Uh, and Clark says, then I'd want you to stop me. So Clark yeah, still sees getting that. getting divorced anyways, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> <Parker>. <laughs> <laughs> is clearly still, like, holding on that moral line, whereas Bruce is just ready to cross it. And he's pretty much tells him, I'm going to kill the Joker, and if you stop me, I'll kill you too. 
and he walks off. So we're setting up the big fight. Uh, we go, to, we cut to the prison, and Lex Luthor is there with his lawyers, and we find out his plan. He found out Bruce Wayne's identity, specifically saying that he re- found a recording of Batman's voice and matched it with a recording of Bruce Wayne's voice. So we have an explanation of how he knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. At the same time, uh, due to his scientific prowess, he cloned the Joker. That's how the Joker's back. The Joker's a oh, clone. Okay. A younger clone, which is also why I'm just like, eh, cast the other dude, because I don't really see Nicholson doing this. Uh, <clears throat> so the Joker's a young clone. He's not really literally the guy brought back to life. And Lex said that he, quote, planned to play one hero's weakness against the others until they were literally at each other's throats. After confessing this to his lawyer, uh, his lawyer swears that he will, you know, because of attorney-client privilege, he's not going to say anything. And Lex is like, that's not how I know you won't tell anyone. And he kills his lawyer. Uh, and when the prison guards arrive, Luthor uses his long nails to, I shit you not, it says he uses his la- nails to lacerate their brain stems and find a way to mind control them so that he can Lacerate escape. their brain stems. <laughs> I understand how that could kill them, but then he's using it to control them? <laughs> He's like doing brain surgery on them with his fingernails <laughs> at the same time. I'm like, this is, I don't know if we needed this. Maybe I a mean, brainiac thing, but not a Lex Luthor yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <clears throat> you know, we accept a certain level of silliness in comic book movies, right? Yeah. Mm. But That's this is kind of beyond the pale. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's just well, got let's... long, just regular ass long fingernails. It's like. Sticks it in their brain stem. It's like I control you now. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> well, let's let's take a step back from the brain stem surgery through fingernails and talk about the plan here. Lex's plan was basically, uh, I'm going to make Batman fight Superman uh, on this because he know he knows that he knows that Batman's going to want to kill the Joker, so he resurrects the Joker. He knows all these different things about Bruce, so he makes Joker kill the love of Bruce's life. <clears throat> and he set it up so that Joker was saved by Superman beforehand. So I feel like Lex's plan is way less confusing here than in the Snyder one. What do you guys think? It is a lot more streamlined. Something about mm-hmm. the clone thing doesn't sit right with me, though. <laughs> I don't... What, you uh, think it should be a Lazarus pit? <laughs> okay, yeah. Maybe that. I Mm -hmm. sometimes I can accept clones more readily than others and there's something about it like within this universe I don't like the idea of the Joker being cloned Mm -hmm. I I don't know it it just makes him seem like lesser or something like that but yeah if it was like if if Lex Luthor had somehow found like access to one of the Lazarus bits and just dumped old you know the Joker's mummy corpse into it and he like came back and it's the real Joker I think that could mm-hmm. be kind of cool because if yeah. you're really going through can- canonically, if it was a younger Joker, he wouldn't be, uh, his skin wouldn't be bleached and stuff. You know, that happened when he was well, Jack Nicholson's age. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Still. Well, the plan, yes, is <laughs> yes, the plan. better. Mm-hmm. It's not hard to, it's a low bar. To beat this plan. <laughs> like, that plan is just so complicated. Uh, it's ridiculous. So, yeah, this one is a lot better. And this one, as we can tell with the fucking brainstem surgery shit and everything else, it's a lot more comic booky in mostly a good way than what yeah. Snyder did. Yeah. You know? Like, mm-hmm. this... this um, what was this? Andrew something? What's this? Who's the guy who wrote Andrew this? Andrew Kevin Walker. Andrew Kevin Walker. He's... And Kiva Goldsman. He's definitely having fun. Like yeah. he's he he's wants to make a real fun comic book movie. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, we don't we haven't read too much of the seven one, right? The guy, that, or the yeah. the, the yeah. darker <clears> one, his original one, outside yeah, of the his original part. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, I don't know. I appreciate I appreciate all this so far. Yeah. So, <clears throat> unmade BVS seven Snyder one. I, I don't think he's gonna win this. Uh, <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> you never know. Over in Metropolis, <laughs> so you're telling shine. me there's a chance. <laughs> Over in Metropolis, uh, the Joker shines the stolen bat signal, and Batman arrives in the bat plane and goes to the signal, and he's about to go to Joker, but Superman stops him. Superman wants to bring Joker to justice, and Batman tells him to walk away since he wants to kill Joker. And Superman says, quote, I can't let you lose yourself to the very dark you've spent your life fighting. And Batman responds, 
I am the darkness. <laughs> That's pretty badass. I am the night. Yeah, I, know. I am the, I am the darkness. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also like that in this version, Superman, in a way, is not only fighting Batman uh, to stop him from killing, but he's also fighting for Bruce's soul. And I don't mm. think there's that element at all in the in the Snyder one because they don't know each other or care enough about each other for that right. to happen. Um, I think this would also be more powerful if this was like movie number three out of a Batman Superman trilogy or something, mm-hmm. as opposed to like the first fucking one. Yeah, uh, but uh, this is what we got. So as Batman says, "I am the darkness," he reveals he's wearing bat armor and says, "I'm Batman." And in a unique version of the bat armor, it's not only the Dark Knight Returns armor. There's kryptonite forged into the metal of the armor. So just the very presence of Batman towards Superman already puts Superman at a disadvantage. So Superman has to keep his distance, and his eyes glow red. And it's fucking on. So, how does this start? (laughs) Points to the unmade one. (laughs) Already. (laughs) Already. (laughs) Sounds cool. Uh, Batman has the Batwing fire missiles at Superman, (laughs) which Superman stops using heat vision. Batman oh, then wraps cool. himself around Superman in the in the kryptonite armor in a bear hug and starts draining Superman's powers, being like, it's almost like you're one of us. Like, you could feel what we feel. This is pain. Get used to it. Uh, he then blows a whistle that disrupts Superman's super hearing and sends the Batwing. He literally sends the Batwing crashing into Superman. <laughs> he just destroys it just so he can take him out <laughs> and just hit. Um Superman, however, is now further away from Batman and away from the Kryptonite, so he uses his super breath to blow Batman back. The fight continues. Batman gets close enough to overtake Superman and dunks him into a fountain, trying to drown him. Uh, but <laughs> Superman is able to throw him off, and he takes off to fly. And Batman's like, oh, no, you don't. And he takes out his grappling gun, and he grapples ar- around Superman's leg and gets whisked off. So now Superman's flying with Batman yeah. hanging onto him. Uh, and Batman cool. pulls up on the line so he can grab Superman. And starts draining his powers. And Superman warns him, like, you're going to kill us both this way. Because now I can't fly. And there's both of us. And, you know, Superman also is pissed. So he throws Batman off. And in a really nice character moment, he throws Batman off. And he's like, oh, no. Because he realized he's throwing his friend to his death. So he dives down now to save Bruce. Even though he knows that that's going to deplete his powers with the kryptonite. Batman, still being pissed and vengeful, refuses to be saved by Clark. So he uses his grappling gun on a building instead to catch him, which, of course, causes his arm to get yanked out of his socket. So that's not so smart. But he crashes into a building. Superman goes in. Uh, Batman still doesn't want his help, so he throws a fucking bomb at him instead. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome, actually. Yeah. He, kicks Superman, he kicks Superman out of the building and onto the street. And so at this point, Superman's been affected by kryptonite. He's been blown up with a bomb. He's been nearly drowned. And he gets up. And he looks at Bruce, and he's like, that all you got? <laughs> so Batman pulls out his gloves, and he starts electrifying them, and hits Superman with electrified gloves. And Superman beats him by basically forcing Batman's hands together, causing a jolt that sends <laughs> Batman back and onto the pavement. That's cool. Um, Superman then's like, well, you got that armor, so I'm sure you can take this. So he throws Batman into a car, and he tears a no-parking sign from the ground, and starts bludgeoning Batman with it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and he's just like, "Stay down!" as he keeps as he keeps hitting him down. And uh, Superman then uses his freeze breath on Batman's armor because he's trying to be more strategic here uh, to make the armor more brittle. Um, and eventually, he cracks Batman's helmet. Uh, so he's basically destroying a lot of Batman's protection. And as Bruce is all nearly out of commission, Superman is weak, so he flies up and recharges from the sun. Unfortunately, I don't know why Clark does this because you clearly shouldn't turn your back on your opponent in this case, but Batman recovers, so he throws a sonic battering to disrupt Superman's hearing so he doesn't hear what he's about to do next, which is that he pulls out a bow and arrow and fires a kryptonite arrow into Clark. So this fully replaces the green arrow role from the Dark Knight Returns mm-hmm. comic. Mm-hmm. Uh, the arrow hits Superman in the collarbone. Superman cries out, and his cries cause the glass in all the buildings on the street to shatter as he falls and you know is injured. Uh, <clears throat> yes and so the kryptonite causes superman to age and batman goes up to him looks at the kryptonite arrow and then he breaks it off so the arrow stays into clark <clears throat> and he's like i have no choice and a bell tolls in the background as batman leaves superman for dead so this versus the snyder verse just in terms of the actual fight what do you guys think 
Hmm. I I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna have to give a point to both of them because I feel like the fight <laughs> is like one of the only one of the most I don't know. It's the highlight of the movie. So it's a of draw. The Snyder movie. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a draw because like that is a good fight scene in the movie. I wish it could have been longer. Um, this one sounds really cool too. I still mm-hmm. like. It's it's so hard for me. Like I still don't know if this motivation the Bruce has is enough to make him this vicious towards Clark. Like he's ready to kill mm-hmm. Clark when he's like, shouldn't he just be wanting to kill like the Joker? And it seems right, like a right, little right. this this mm-hmm. uh, cruelty seems a little misplaced. But overall, I'm still still here for mm-hmm. it. Yeah, Andrew. I agree with Zach on the motivation stuff. It's a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit much. But I mean, as far as like moves in the fight, yeah. it's yeah. really cool. I think I kind of prefer the actual choreography, all the moves done in the unmade one. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Snyder's. I, we all know he's great at action, mainly, and it's good. But it's like there, he's like literally ripping off a sink in it. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like I don't know. I just feel like it could have been something a little better. Than what we got, and this is, I, you know, did we ever get like him grappling, doing the grappling hook on Superman's leg? It's ever? something we no. we talked about, like we wish would have happened whenever mm-hmm. he tore the doors off the Batmobile and like goes to fly away. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we talked <clears throat> about that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish something like that. I mean, I yeah, I like I I like these moves in this one. It's it's just again a little bit more comic book fun. Uh. So yeah, but does he shoot the arrow from into space? Like where? Where is <laughs> oh, Superman? Superman's coming back. He's coming back, he's coming back down. <laughs> he's coming back down. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, damn, what's a fucking great, <laughs> great aim, Bruce. That's Batman's right. better than both Green Arrow and Hawkeye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, god damn, I can shoot you from space. Shoot yeah. Space. <laughs> damn, that's a good shot, Bruce. <laughs> Clark's like, I can't be mad about this. That was that was fucking impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he That's falls down, he half dead. He's down. like, not even, not even mad. <laughs> impressive, <laughs> awesome dude. Oh. Good shot, Bruce. <laughs> so Superman's out of commission. He's not dead, but he's pretty fucked up. Wait, and so Batman, Batman is... was on the way to kill Joker, though, right? Yeah, it's just him inter- on his way intervenes. to killing Joker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this is just a stroll in the park for for Bruce on his way to the actual mission. Um, so Batman makes his way towards the meeting spot with Joker and apparently uses his jetpack to try to find Joker as Joker taunts Batman and he taunts Batman specifically about Elizabeth and he tells Bruce to look at his wedding ring and as Bruce looks at his, his wedding rings he finds that inside the wedding ring is embedded with Joker faces. Because, as Joker tells him, the love of your life was working for me. Elizabeth Miller was working for Joker. She was, oh, yeah. quote-unquote, designed and manipulated to be the, quote-unquote, perfect woman for Bruce. Just so that Joker would have them fall in love and then he would kill her. <clears throat> so, hmm. Bruce's whole happiness is a lie. <clears throat> and as he reveals this, Joker uses an axe to try to kill Batman. Just as a weakened Superman arrives to save him. Because even though Clark was near, he's been so fucked up by Bruce by this whole thing, he still wants to help his friend. Uh, so Joker yeah. sends his own henchmen in, and they attack, and they send Superman falling off the edge because Superman still has a fucking kryptonite arrowhead inside his body. So Batman jumps after him, and they're both falling. And Batman's like, I take it you can't fly right now. And Superman's like, kryptonite poisoning, you dick. Well, <laughs> that would have been good though kind of good yeah. would have. so batman has to use the grappling gun in order to save both of them so batman has to use a grappling gun to save superman here and as they land they have to fight together against joker and the minions so this is an awfully quick turnaround i think of of fighting it to is. now teaming up but <clears throat> whatever the case is they take down the goons and batman gets the joker and we have a very familiar image of the armored Batman with his boot on somebody who he wants to kill. And it's the Joker. And no, Joker's not about to reveal that his mother's ma- name is Martha. We've got something very different here. Uh, <laughs> so Batman's about to kill Joker, and Superman catches up, and he sees that this is about to happen. And Clark says, go ahead. Go do it. Quote, people have a right to choose, but do me one favor before you do. 
before you kill him. Take off the mask. Don't hide behind it. Don't pretend there's some other part of you doing this. Own it. Hollywood Reporter described this dialogue as, quote, a climactic speech, a key to what the, key, the filmmakers wanted to explore, the notion of dual identities and why Bruce and Clark wield them, the idea that they put on their separate identities to pretend it's someone else doing these things. Mm. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. This is a great finale, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> Points to the unmade one. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So this is, I feel like this is the original Martha scene because it's the same thing where Batman's about to kill somebody then realizes, you know, what he's about to become Mm -hmm. and then decides not to do it. Uh, Batman in this version takes off the mask and it's Bruce with his foot on the Joker's throat and he looks down and he gradually takes the foot off as he realizes what he's about to become in order to do that. And he spares the life and Superman says, thank you. This is this versus the Martha scene. Should I really ask what you guys prefer? <laughs> you do not. For, for me, <laughs> this is uh, way way better here. Does the Joker leave a jar of PP and runs away? <laughs> There's no jar of PP. Does what happens to the Joker? Then he's just like, eh, you got me. I'm. Not, we're not done yet. This okay. Is not the end all, of right. all right. All right. <laughs> be patient. Zach, was that the credits, man? Yeah, sorry. Nope, I don't think I will. <laughs> That's why he's it's like Captain America. Whenever he's like, "Will you gonna kill him?" He's like, "No, sir, I don't think I, don't I, think I will." In <laughs> credits. That's End hilarious. Credits. Cut to Bruce dancing with Joker to jazz music. Oh my hey, god! I'd be so, into it. Just then, uh, Lex Luthor arrives, and he's like, "I knew you couldn't do it." And he talks about how disappointed he is in Joker, and so he shoves Joker out the window and kills him. What? That's yeah, Wait, I know. It's, out the window. Fucking where were they? I thought they were. Huh? Where were they? I, I was uh, like picturing them on the ground somewhere. Oh no, no, no! They they fell on some other part of the building that's still high up. Oh, or something. this okay. part needs a rewrite. I don't like. <laughs> I know, this. right? That's, Lex Luthor just neither. kills Joker right after Batman spared him. I think that's pretty weak. So yeah, I wonder. There's probably like think about this, like how Snyder has like been like trapped by the studio at times. Yeah, like. There's like some parts that he probably like. Well, any director like they're in, they're making a big studio movie, and there's probably like scenes like this. Like, well, we're we're gonna. He's probably thinking in the back of his head. I guess we'll shoot it, but hopefully we can cut it in the editing room. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah, exactly. On the, even the director on on the shooting day is like, I don't know. Let's just fucking get it done and move yeah, on. I, you I know. Think, <laughs> I think the only way I could accept this if it, is if he pushes the Joker. And Joker grabs him, and they both fall out the window and die. <laughs> like that would—that seems like fun to me. He's like, ah, hey, you know, you that can laugh like, well, on the way that down. Was easy. <laughs> it just yeah. takes the wind out of the sails of the last scene. I know, it right? Does, you know, yeah. such a great scene there. And also, like, the Joker's one of the top, you know, villains of all time. Yeah, he's not going to get taken out get by Mister Clean. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so. dumb. And he was in prison before too. I guess yeah. he escaped, but still, come on. Lex says, quote, I was prepared to kill one superhero. I suppose it won't be that much harder to kill two. And he takes off the coat he's wearing, and it says that he's wearing an exoskeleton of the type we saw in the Project Achilles Bunker, which I'm going to picture as the Lexo suit from the mm-hmm. comics, the green yeah. and purple suit. Yeah. Uh, and he starts beating on the heroes because apparently the suit gives Luthor super speed, which I don't think is part of the Lexo suit. But uh, <clears throat> So basically, Luthor is the Flash now. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Flash legs. <laughs> Batman and Luther go off the edge of the building and are fighting each other in midair, which is somewhat pointless because they're both going to die. They both land. So Superman goes off to save Bruce, and the sun starts coming up. And the effect of the solar radiation gives him the strength to save him and let Luther fall. So he saves, he saves Batman here, who's all grateful and stuff, and all tuckered out. <laughs> it's all tuckered <laughs> out. <laughs> I sure is. <laughs> so, so Lex Luthor Little bat smashes baby. on the ground right next to Joker. So they're both <laughs> sidewalk stroking off. Yes. However, <laughs> down below, Barbara Gordon arrives visiting from Gotham and brings up that Luthor's body can't be found. They can only find the suit. So Luthor is still around for a Joker rematch in the future. Dead. Well, I don't know if they find Joker's body either. So I don't know. But hmm. it's it's weird. But anyway, she asked Superman, how is he? And Superman says, he'll heal. It's what you humans do. And Barbara says, tell him I'm sorry. And then leaves. Uh, on the rooftop, Batman throws away his wedding ring as Superman goes to him. 
and they talk about how you know Luthor can't be found, but there's evil in the world, and that's why they exist. And then I swear this is bred definitely not by Andrew Kevin Walker, but here's the final exchange. <laughs> Batman looks at Superman. And he's like, "You look like crap," and Superman says, "You should see the other guy." <clears throat> and they shake hands, and it says their handshake their handshake is strong and lasting, a friendship renewed. And Batman's like, "So, you want to get a beer?" I'll cancel the pizzas (laughs) Superman says maybe a soda or something And Batman says oh my god What is it with you Maybe a tall glass of whole milk (laughs) Ice cold whole milk So that's the final exchange Oh no Rewrite this third act Most (laughs) The last half of the third act Yeah It should have Like everything after the uh, him, him sparing Joker, he's yeah. kind of a mess on this. Total mess. That's ridiculous. It's a, it's a mess. Yeah. So uh, let's do a couple more rounds of this type of stuff. So unmade BVS is at nine. Snyder at one. But he has some opportunities here. If we were to compare the final, you know, the third acts and stuff, we have this versus the death of Superman and the Doomsday fight and Wonder Woman's introduction. I feel like I would give it to Snyder on this one because just like it's, it's very just by a hair. Yeah. Because at least like definitely the unmade version does a better version of, of Batman sparing the life of Joker, but mm-hmm. <clears throat> super speed Luthor versus the death of Superman of doomsday plus wonder woman's fantastic introduction. You, I just got to give that to Snyder. Yeah. 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 So there's that. And then when it comes to the final scene, we have, this exchange about Clark not wanting to drink a beer versus the funeral. <laughs> oh, man. I don't think Clark, so, excuse me, I don't think he, he can even get drunk anyways. Yeah, <laughs> he true, can't. So I don't know. It's it's dumb. They should have just ended with the handshake. And then yeah. that's it. Like, you don't have the exchange. Uh, it's like they tried to do the whole shawarma thing before Avengers was a thing. It's just not. Yeah, not right? Yeah. 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 That's so true. I would also give it to Snyder for that for a better final scene. I'm sure Snyder would have read that part and he was like, "Nah, we're gonna nix this immediately." Not my thing. Yeah. So <laughs> put still, the old kibosh on it. It's still Snyder at three, <laughs> but the unmade version at nine, which does make the the unmade version our top preferred one. So, mm-hmm. what do you guys think of this overall? Hmm. Doo doo head. <laughs> hey, it's Doo Doo Brown. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, if I had to rank it, I think I would give it a B minus. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah, B minus sounds pretty good. It's uh, yeah. <clears throat> still better than the overall. I think it's still better than Batman v Superman, but there are like some hiccups along the way, and it is hard to imagine the tone of this movie exactly Mm -hmm. so i it's really hard for me to imagine it happening in 2004 like to to picture what Mm -hmm. this would have really been like but um yeah overall i do like how it was a little bit more simple i still feel like what is it world's finest the animated one that's been probably the best version of batman and superman meeting having a little bit of a, a tiff at the beginning but Mm. Yeah, this is uh, is pretty cool. Andrew? Yeah, I ultimately prefer the unmade one. Uh, I think it's it's a B plus. If, it's, def- it's maybe even A if they rewrite that third act. <laughs> I mean, yeah. We're looking at A, A plus territory, really, mm-hmm. if, if they rewrite and, and that Luther's part. And fingernails. Get rid of that. <laughs> yeah, and that, oh yeah, that part too. Yeah, that was... Those parts are obviously the worst. Like, what what are yeah. we doing here? That <laughs> right. was that was terrible. But I wanted to talk about. So we have like basically a, a pretty clear character arc for Batman. Mm-hmm. Clark's character arc. He's basically it's with Lana, right? So he has to choose yeah. to mm-hmm. be. But I feel like that's good. But it would be stronger if their character arcs were intertwined more. With Batman and Superman, not Superman and Lana, and Superman and Batman. You know what I mean? Like that mm-hmm. was that was fine, but I don't know, Ben. You're the writer here. Like you know, what I'm, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like, like yeah. I, mean, I think maybe the intention. Go ahead. He's wanting. What was he wanting to quit Superman for a bit, and then yeah. Batman 
teaches him maybe yeah batman should have told him in some way between he sees he sees batman slash as bruce's struggles and that informs his character arc somehow and it's like well i guess i will be superman i guess i should be superman for life or whatever <clears throat> you know what i mean i feel like that's that's in it without them making it uh, very apparent but i i feel like that element is there with the fact that he stops Bruce from killing the Joker? I it's like, like I need that. I need to keep saving people, including most of all the ones that are closest to me. Yeah, that's that how it's written in. <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's not it's not said like that. It's it's not yeah, really yeah. addressed like that. But I think that Superman sort of more affirms that there is room for Superman in this world by the end, where he sort of wins out over Batman. In uh, you know the philosophical way, you know mm-hmm. uh, where his code wins out and he saves his friend's soul and stuff, and they become even tighter as a team. Like I think that is what they were going for. It's just not mm-hmm. necessarily blatant, but I think that's kind of where you would go with that. Where it's just like, okay, <clears throat> it's one thing where he decides, oh, all right, I'm going to go back and become Superman again. It's another thing for you to give him that one last test to see, like, okay, now that you're back as Superman, are you actually, you know? okay or are you ready to stand up for what you believe in even to the point where your best friend might try to kill you right right yeah see okay it's just it's always interesting to see like what is the minimum amount of changes you can make to a script yeah that really send it over the edge into something really great Mm -hmm. and like let's say we keep the divorce in there and that's why and we have him as Clark Kent writing in the beginning um, something really dour and mm-hmm. it's narration maybe. And, you know, he's, it's not, maybe not about like, well, you know, his divorce, but it's about, <laughs> it's his personal life is feeding into his writing. And then he has a talk with Perry or whatever. It's like, Clark, you've, mm-hmm. you're fucking downer these days or whatever, you know? <laughs> and then it feeds into his arc with Lana and shit. And then that snowballs into him fighting with Batman, his best friend, but then they kiss and make up. And then he's, <laughs> he sees hope in humanity again. And then also Batman sees the error of his ways. He learns that murder is wrong again, <laughs> but yeah, if you, yeah. Right. So if we made these little minor changes, change those, that beer conversation at the end, take out the yeah. fucking, um, <clears throat> you know, mind control fingernails. And I think we got an A plus picture. I think this is easier to fix. Yeah. 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 For sure. Bat- mm-hmm. Batman says, well, so, all right. Clark says, how about a tall glass of cold milk? And then Batman <laughs> says, make mine chocolate. And then roll <laughs> <laughs> make mine chocolate. The end. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll never forget there was those got milk ads of like the 90s Mm -hmm. and early 2000s and they had like Batman with chocolate milk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was that a comic book Batman or was that like Christian Bale? I can't remember. I think it was like I remember seeing a Christian Bale Batman with with a milk mustache. I definitely remember that. Yes. Uh, Dude. I don't know if there was another one. I feel like does anybody drink milk by the glass anymore? That seems like a (laughs) no. Does not many people do that as much. Mm -hmm. Probably for the best. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about, let's close out by talking a bit about why this did not happen. At least this version did not happen. Because clearly we did get a version. It just wasn't this specific type. Um, so Warner Brothers was apparently in a debate among the execs about, is this actually the best way to revitalize a franchise? Should we start with solo movies and then have them team up later? Or should we have them team up and then do the solo movies? What do we do? And already, like, as we can tell, it seems like a weird way to start a franchise when mm-hmm. Superman's already been divorced from Lois, or Batman doesn't have Alfred, Commissioner Gordon, Dick Grayson, or even the Joker now. Yeah. So it's like, well, what what exactly are you going to do? It makes more sense as, as I said, like the third movie in a trilogy of Batman, Superman, team up mm-hmm. movies, or maybe like a send off for Clooney and then spin off, uh, you know, Superman. But they just didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> Big surprise. Yeah. And not <laughs> much has changed. changed. Much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this what they were planning whenever it was in I Am Legend? This was the script kind yeah. of floating yeah. around whenever that was yeah. uh, hinted yeah. at? This was, yeah, yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> they 
we're thinking it's either this or we're going to reboot Superman with the J.J. Abrams script, which we have not gone over yet. But J.J. Abrams, uh, I found this in an article. I don't know if it's true, but apparently he objected to them doing Batman versus Superman. Obviously, he has biased reasons because he wants them to do his Superman movie. Mm -hmm. But he also said that it would be like, quote, releasing when Harry divorced Sally, followed up by when Harry met Sally. Yeah. (laughs) Where it just didn't make any sense. Oh, my God. See, JJ knows what's going on. Come on. That's that Uh, makes a lot of sense. So eventually the execs are like, you know what? Let's not do Batman versus Superman. Let's do the Superman movie. Let's do JJ Abrams Superman movie. And then we'll find out at some other point why that didn't go through and turn into Superman Returns. So neither of these movies became made. But... Years later, Akiva Goldsman would work on I Am Legend. And in I Am Legend is the Easter egg that Andrew was talking about where it is a hypothetical poster in the background. Done in 2007, way before Snyder was even doing DC movies. So... uh, I mean, it's like the current comic book cover too, right? Of like the Batman Superman comics. Yeah. They have that like logo. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, and Superman logo itself kind of looks a little Superman Returns Returns ish. Mm-hmm. Do you so. think that they were thinking of having Ben uh, Ben Affleck, uh, Christian Bale's Batman, eventually team up or meet up with uh, what's his name as Brandon Superman? Ralph? Yeah, because it's like I'm Batman sure was... begins, Superman Returns. I always thought it was supposed to be kind of like yeah. a play on it. I feel like this is something that was discussed in one meeting. If Warner Brothers sits Christopher Nolan down and he says no. Yeah. Like, yeah. Never mind. I think Nolan. <laughs> like, I feel like that's what happened. Nolan didn't want any other kind of Batman around, right? So, yeah. yeah. Probably didn't want Superman either. I want to end this episode on a quote uh, from another writer saying, quote, Batman versus Superman is where you go when you admit to yourself that you've exhausted all possibilities. It's like Frankenstein meets Wolfman or Freddy versus Jason. It's somewhat of an admission that the franchise is on its last gasp. The man who said this was, of course, David Goyer, future co-writer of Batman v Superman. (laughs) 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 Wow. It's delicious. And that is superhero stuff you should know. All right. Well, you know, we've gotten a shitload of good ones since that quote, so. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, So thanks, everyone, for joining us. This is our end of year episode. Just to let you guys know, we're taking a bit of a break. We will be back with more episodes on the main show on January 10th, so stay tuned until then. But uh, as usual, big thanks to our research assistant, Dan, for gathering the visuals for this YouTube experience. Clearly, I should have had you Photoshop a middle finger in George Clooney's <laughs> hand at one point. <clears throat> Clearly. But, uh, I think it is time for a little fireside chat with Mr. J. Hey, let me so. close my door real quick. Yes. Uh, so... Since, as I said earlier, this is our end-of-year episode, so I wanted to include more comments than usual for our Uncle Joker to talk about. Uh, So I will present them when he comes back. But, you know, this is kind of a nice end-of-year gift to you guys, and thank you for your support this year, especially because this has been probably, you know, our biggest year yet in terms of subscribers, in terms of viewers. So thank you for being a part of that. Oh, yeah. So here we go. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) And it's that time again, kids, for another Joker's Fireside Chats. Zachary Brown, eight days ago. Little Zachary writes, man, that Zachary Jackson Brown guy is super talented. <laughs> wait, no, wait a minute. Not to mention a nice piece of eye candy to boot. <laughs> I saw this one, dude. This is uh, yeah, great, I, I mean, man. I agree with this guy. This is... <laughs> This guy knows where it's at. Goose egg comment right here. (laughs) I was just trying to drive up the YouTube views there. (laughs) Oh, yeah, you really drove it up. Yeah. It did get seven likes. This is all we needed. So clearly people will agree. Yeah. Yeah, see? This is what I mean by adding more comments, guys. Clearly we're not being self-serving with this at all. Yeah. (laughs) Here's some some real comments. All right. By the way, this is our response to our episode last week on The Penguin. Very good. All right. Little Robbie Murray writes, Dear Uncle Joker, love the ep, guys. I just wanted to point out the water penguin falls into at the end of BR is full of toxic waste from Shrek's dubious dealings. He planned to kill all the firstborn sons by throwing them into it. I think that's what kills him. I got that's something to say about point. that. 
<clears throat> what do you think, Zach? I think that that's not true because uh, I know he says it at the beginning. Uh, Penguin says, like, a, a batch of toxic waste from your clean textile plant. And then he says, we got a whole lagoon of this crud in the back. But the water that Penguin falls into is the same water that his penguins are swimming around in all the time. They even jump yeah. into it earlier. Ooh, that's true. However, doesn't he tell Max that he's going to send the children into the water? Yeah, but they're kids. They're going to drown anyways, right? I guess some of them are a little <laughs> bit older. <laughs> what if they learn how to swim? Then Penguin's like, fuck. Like he's going to quick. Gonna poke them down with his umbrella. <laughs> stay down stay there. there. Yeah. I know he uh, says, like, something about immersing Max in raw sewage, but I guess that could just mean, like, the duty water the, the penguins are swimming around in. I'm a little confused that by that. We just got to rewatch this movie again. Hopefully we have not watched it enough, so. Yep. <clears throat> Perfect. We'll watch it and get back it. to you, Rob. <laughs> yeah. I agree with all of you. <laughs> Take the easy way out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Next comment. <clears throat> All right, another Spider-Man's comment from the unmade Spider-Man costumes. Yes. Uh -uh, this is El Torito Rique. Is that right? I would think so. Yeah. Good enough. All right. Yes. Uncle Joker had to put on his reading glasses. <clears throat> <laughs> this one comes from El Torito Rique. <laughs> Little El Torito <laughs> writes, <laughs> Uncle Joker. Oh, man. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to tackle Spidey Man in a future episode ever since you did You've did the Hulk and it's finally here <laughs> Plus I've always wanted to see you tackle James Cameron's Spider-Man script since you did the 90s Hulk script Sorry if I'm repeating myself my myself but all I can say, I'm really happy to see you do an episode on my favorite Marvel superhero of all time. But my favorite number one hero of all time. Thank you so much, guys. Excelsior! I like it. Oh, yes. P.S. James Cameron Spider-Man was so fucking weird and messed up. I'm glad we got Raimi's version instead. <laughs> Enough I think said. We'll just have to explore that. Yeah, we'll just have to explore that at some point. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree. Yes. yes. <laughs> On to the next. Yeah, comment. a good comment. Thank you. Uh, yes. <clears throat> Little Cyrus Stevens writes, "Dear Uncle Joker, in the script where Max Shrek's the Penguin's brother, I think the change of Joss and Jen's Josh." And Jen's name, I've had a little too much to drink here at our fireside, Jen. <laughs> Their names is a reference to the Charleston comic, DC Comics characters, Punch and Julie. I also think mm. it is a reference to the puppets, right? Yeah, I think it's more likely the Punch reference and to the puppets of Punch and Judy that's yeah. been around for a long time. I don't think it's supposed to be... Punch and Julie, because Daniel Waters just does not strike me as a big comic book fan who's like, I'm going to put these Easter eggs in of these other characters. I just think he was thinking about this. I don't think he was thinking yeah. about these other characters. He's probably never heard of them, honestly. But A good fan theory. <clears throat> good, good theory, though, yeah. And uh, next is... All right, another comment on our... is Penguin Max Shrek's brother. <clears throat> yes. This one comes from Little Midian down the lane. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Uncle Joker, first time listener, very interesting episode. <laughs> like and subscribe. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> Happy Thank holidays. you, Midian. Thank you, Midian. <laughs> Hope you enjoy uh, the backlog yes. on all the older stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this guy has a great name. <laughs> this is this is, a, this is oh, an S tier include this S tier one. name. Oh yeah, this is on our S tier. Um, Unmade uh, Batmobiles. <laughs> mm. Ah, this is a good one. From Little Scroty Johnson. <laughs> Little Scroty writes, speaking in, speaking in phallic Batmobiles, the Batman Forever Batmobile is ripped for her pleasure. <laughs> 
You would say that, wouldn't you, little scroty? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is an S, S plus Mysterious. comment, scroty. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Com comment. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, Geiger it was very into um, <laughs> yeah. sexualization in his art, so I'm not surprised. Oh, yeah. my God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Little Scrody. Oh, that is the last man. one. <laughs> this is. Alright. Luis Camera e Decena? You might want to say Luce. 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 Luce Camera. <clears throat> Alright, folks. Here's our last letter for the night. <laughs> Little Luce Camera. Luce writes Dear Uncle Joker. Great video! <laughs> I love Batman Returns content. Even though it's not as good as Batman because you're not in it. But <laughs> definitely need Batman and Penguin battling on a button-esque roller coaster in the climax now. That sounds brilliant! Is there going to be concept art video about the other movies in the quadrilogy, guys? Batman Forever must have tons of it. And that was Uncle Joker's Fireside Chats. <laughs> it does probably have tons of it. So are it we going to do episodes on the other 90s Batman films? I mean, maybe. I mean, you, you never know. Out there. <laughs> there could be some cool stuff Holy out there to the go over. Layer. Some stuff you've seen, some stuff maybe you haven't. Maybe you'll just have to be patient. <laughs> maybe, maybe so. You guys thought maybe we forgot to do a post credit scene right now. So anyway, oh, yeah. that's a little preview. Nice. Over oh, to Andrew. God damn, man. Thank you for the fireside chat, Joker. <laughs> yes, thank you, <laughs> Uncle course. Joker. Yes. And your fireside chats. All right. <laughs> so thank you for those comments, everybody. And thank you to our Patreon supporters who are, man, our our list gets uh, longer every time, doesn't it? We got Shasta, mm -hmm. Leom, O, Super Inframan, Douglas P, Dandy, Aaron Willett, Nick Noir. Jeffrey R, Scott V, Asger's Web, Jeremy H, Alex of the What Mean Podcast, Ian Justice, Jared P, Paul C, Jamie H, Rochelle L, Tara M, Matthew B, Skyler T D, Jonathan Sketchcraft, and Braxton W. I try to do it like um, what was the host of Jeopardy again? Trebek, where I try to pronounce everything correctly. Like noir, noir. <laughs> <laughs> and um, our other supporters, Spark Again, SECT Productions, Robert Schumann, Kooky Noms, Matt Herring, Elijah B, Shamrock Balls, Ian H, Walter the Wobot, John Wells, Rye Guy, Jackson Putnam, Tway In, Watson, that's Stage Bat on Instagram, and then Logan Wood, which is Shane Helms 121 on Instagram. All right. And then, Thank you. please check out <clears throat> the Patreon, which is patreon.com slash superhero stuff pod. Got the one dollar tier, gets you the shout out, five dollar tier, whole other show on Friday. <laughs> I mean, what more can you ask for? It's on uh yeah, this shows on every Monday, and then uh the Patreon shows every Friday, deeper dives and reviews and stuff like that. Some new segments as well. And uh yeah, that's behind the paywall and uh the five dollar tier. Cancel anytime, and then we have the ten dollar tier, that's a monthly meetup. And we have one coming really soon, actually. Tell them about it, Ben or Zach. We're going to be talking Call about Zach some to toys. <laughs> some of the weirdest and wildest and wackiest toys in the DC Batman universe. And that will be already out by the time this episode's out, I think. But yeah, that's you'll true, find actually. it. But you'll find it if you sign up. You'll find it, yeah. It's there, so mm -hmm. there you go. And then uh, we got super. <laughs> forget it again, man. Super, we got <laughs> our merch. Don't expect it anymore. <laughs> Superhousepod.redbubble.com. Superhero stuff pod.threadless.com. One of those does have the art for Jokula, but one of them doesn't. <laughs> I'm going to look it up right now. Ben See, man, I'm really small somewhere in that picture with just the two of you. <laughs> ben man, indeed, wizard mugs, and that's it on one of them. <laughs> His <laughs> shirt, shower curtains, and shit like that. Artwork by Stefan Santa Cruz, and his artwork is actually also on our uh, on our um, web page. Where uh, if we don't plug this enough, do we? There's a, we have all the show notes on a uh, super super how, uh, superhero stuff pod dot com. So uh, also, I just looked and <laughs> Zach is on neither Threadless or Redbubble. And that neither of them. He was approved <laughs> on for neither. one. I'm oh on man, the of Ben's shoe there. That is, like, Sorry about that, Zach. Small. 
<laughs> Man. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm going to be Thunderwolf Drew again on Instagram. I've changed my name back. Just uh, <laughs> Things got a little weird there. But anyway, Thunderwolf Drew on Instagram mm-hmm. and Thunderwolf Drew on Twitter. And then Thunderwolf Lives on YouTube. ThunderwolfDrew.com has all of me photos and videos. Amonorecon.com is something that I'm working on. It's a uh, original idea. Mix up Power Rangers and X-Files. Ash versus the Evil Dead, and uh, sh- shit like that. Make it R-rated. Put it in a bucket. Swirl it around. Make it an original idea. And that's what Amonorecon.com, or Amonorecon is. And uh, this artwork on the poster is from Zachatavius Maximus. Thank you, Zach. Yeah. It will be an Indiegogo movie at some point. And uh, that's it for me. Ben? Shout out to Comic Capital on Instagram as well as the Everything Entertainment Club on Clubhouse. You can follow us on our social media at Twitter at Superhouse Pod, Instagram Superhero Stuff Pod, TikTok Superhero Stuff Pod, Vero Superhero Stuff Pod. My website is BenOneWriter.com where you can read my Gotham script, Gotham Vampire, where Bruce faces off against the Mad Monk, or my spec script for Elementary, The Death of Sherlock Holmes, a modern update on the classic story, The Adventure of the Dying Detective. My YouTube channel is in the description below, where you can also check out my project, Doctor Who, The Ronin of Time, an audio drama I write, narrate, and edit, The Eighth Doctor Meets Miyamoto Musashi, thumbnail by Dan. Um, my personal Instagram is Benwan Ryder. My baby boy's Instagram, my cat, Alfie, is <laughs> Alfie Pennyworth Cat. And uh, if you also have an Alfie, Alfie or any sort of cat, especially those who barge in in the middle of your recording like with Zach then yeah. you should get them the whisker box the only cat box for the crazy cat lady and gent and if you don't have a cat but you have a dog that's okay too because we're also with the bark box y'all yes the promo that we talked about earlier we can get the bark box for the first month off free valued at $35 if you use our promo link and you can find that link over at superhero stuff slash shop where you can find all sorts of the affiliate stuff the eBay stuff for Batman merchandise Amazon affiliate links, all at superherostuffpod.com slash shop. Over to Zach. Well, thank you, everybody that's been watching and listening and taking in everything. If you want to see more artwork from me, not just the thumbnails, you can go to ZacharyJacksonBrownArt.com. You can also follow me for the newest artwork on TikTok, Instagrams, and uh, I don't post anything on YouTubes, but uh, you can just follow me there anyways. (laughs) Uh, at Zachary Jackson Brown Art. So it's all the same name. And thank you for all those listeners that have actually been buying stuff. I'm kind of surprised. Every nice. now and then I'll recognize a name. Uh, people That's that have cool. got t-shirts or uh, prints. So, yeah, thanks. Hope you guys enjoy awesome. seeing some more shit. Awesome, bro. And, uh, you know, it's that time. Mm-hmm. The last time for this year where we want you to do us a favor I want you to tell all your friends about us he must have been king of the wicker people <laughs> <laughs>